This is the Cult Faction Podcast, episode 30. Happy Horror Hijinks! Welcome to episode 30 of the Cult Faction Podcast. Happy Horror Hijinks, where this week we'll be taking a a happy look on the homicidal side of horror, where there's cheers and murder and death, and we're going to really enjoy ourselves. Uh, That'll be a little bit later on. Before that, you're going to get our usual chat and banter. um, (laughs) And to help me with that chat and banter, we have got with me tonight, we have... Damien Hicks. And of course, Paul Hawkins. So, it's been a fun week. It's been a mad week. Hold and on, we... hold on, hold on. You first introduced us as it's going to be a really happy podcast. We can't guarantee that. Us be happy for a whole podcast. I'd hate there to be a twist in a horror film. Well, I'm in a really foul mood, so it's very unlikely I'm going to be happy. Yeah. But... And most of the things I ever say are sarcastic, so it's, you know, we'll Maybe see. we should call it the we'll sarcastic see. Oh, but it's happy horror hijinks we've got to go with the alliteration okay yeah we started something six yeah. seven eight months ago we've got to stick to it <laughs> yeah. now yeah power of free and alliteration where possible but anyway you know that you've detracted from our happy horror hijinks we're back on the path it's been a fun week we've all been doing really cool happy fun stuff with a horror edge because we're happy and horry <laughs> so paul what have you been up to i've been going around killing people and with a big smile on my face excellent same as usual then yeah 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 pretty much have well, you I, watched anything during the killings well i just like to say yeah i was a bit disappointed we didn't have the spiced pumpkin cocktails this week but maybe next week well seeing as you're driving yeah but i wouldn't have i was i was waiting for the oh no no let's let's do halloween cocktails or something but then i kind of thought well actually it's, it's only like early october yeah. still so let, let's on save a, that on a school night that's <laughs> crazy talk that's the sort of thing that alcohol three guys in the shed <laughs> that is a horror film waiting <laughs> to happen wait don't you have a half term coming up good point yeah i do is that coincide with halloween now i'm happy again <laughs> <laughs> yeah See? i've got it's this week and next mouth. week then i've got a week off exactly so maybe we'll so there we go then, then. Our, our final halloween special excellent cocktails so sort of, live and on the piss <laughs> <laughs> just for you but yeah but before we get to that we need to talk about what we've been doing this week paul what you've been watching in between your homicidal outbursts well i've been watching people die as i kill them with a big smile on my face but i've also been watching the box just just, just for just for any legal people watching he's having a laugh Oh, no. And we got his whereabouts for the next <laughs> last week sorted. So. No, I'm deadly serious. And he didn't buy any cable ties yet. I, I posted the videos on TikTok and everything. Loads of views. Oh, there. maybe he did. <laughs> okay, so. But anyway. I've got a pack of cable ties down here if you want them. Yeah, they're coming handy for next week. Cool. <laughs> so, Squid Games completed the series. What did you think? Uh, yeah, oh, so... Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Oh, really? Are we, are well, we imagine spoilers? if. I'm just saying now, just in case we do. Well, it's kind of one of those things where it's all over the internet anyway. Um, and you're already seeing the memes with Guy um, like um, being posted around. So I think most people know how it ends, and um, I, I don't think there's really any any doubt in anyone's mind who was going to win. Um, I almost said Hunger Games, then. <laughs> who was going to win Squid Games? Um, I was a little bit disappointed with, with his choice in colour. Let, let, I'll just say that right now. Uh, I end. thought it popped. Yeah. Um, and, and also, I was a bit disappointed for his child right at the end as well. Um, but anyway, uh, that's that's what I want to say. Yeah, but if that didn't happen, we probably wouldn't have like Squid Games well, too. The search for more squid. They could have just done it, you know, waited until he returned from a trip, and then he's like, "Now I'm going to do this." Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> we're, we're talking around it because Damien hasn't seen it yet. No, you going, carry on. Uh, are, you, are you worried about spoilers no. on this? I won't remember anything you say, so... <laughs> Yeah, Cole. but when you listen to it back again, it's, it's, still just, it's just noise when I'm <laughs> listening back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so definitely worth a watch. See, I really liked it. The one bit that I totally realised what everything was going to happen, and it was the bit with the old man. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, <clears throat> and you didn't see anything, I was like, I know what this is now. Yeah, yeah. And then it was right, and that was the one bit. I was, I was on. I still enjoyed it, but as soon as that happened, I was like, ah. Oh. And yeah, right. so I really enjoyed it. I know, I know it's um, tearing the internet apart, um, but let's face it, it's been a huge success for Netflix. It's one of the biggest programs ever. Yeah. Um, there is a series two, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm all up for, for, for more of it. And, and, it. and what an awesome social commentary it is, just diving in on yours, you know, the, the rich living off the poor. It's an inspector <laughs> calls for the new generation. But as we've been saying on this podcast since its creation, we've been bigging up um, the, the, the likes of Korean films. Um, uh, and, you know, I like to think we're the trendsetter. And if it wasn't for us and the podcast, um, I don't think it would have been a success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but, but I think, I think it, you know, it's a really good positive... Um, way of just bigging up some of the great films that come out from the likes of Korea mm. and China uh, uh, as well. So yeah, all up for that. And uh, on a, on, a, on another note, now um, I saw my sister on Sunday, and she was on about um, the kids at her primary school are all playing red light, green light. Yeah, <laughs> and I went, you do realise that's from Squid Game, don't you? And she was like, what's that? And she she what? missed that, and I brought her up to speed. She went, well, we need to get that banned now. <laughs> <laughs> well, e e e even Minecraft do uh, do Squid Game as well. Yeah, oh, the kids at school watching it on Roblox. Yeah, Roblox. Roblox, do. yeah, yeah down yeah. with the kids. Know mm. what I'm talking about. So, yeah, that was Squid Game. So it's taken the world by storm. The, the other thing I've been watching is Oat Studio on Netflix as well. So Oat Studio? Tell Oat, us about that. Oat Studio is an anthology of sci-fi. Hang on, hang on. Horror. We talked about this months ago. No, that was Love, Death and Robots. No, it wasn't. See, you pay no fucking attention to anything I say. But I hadn't been watching it. I said I'm watching it. Yeah, well, we don't need to go over it. We've gone over it back every, in March. Every, but... every podcast is someone's first podcast. Oh, for fuck's sake. He doesn't have to go over it. He just gives He's us... going to go over it. Though, no, but he, he said, goes over no, it. it's a sci-fi go... anthology. We've got that bit. Yeah. Now, what was the one you watched? So, Tell us about that. No, I watched all There's only one. Oh. Well, actually, there's two. Loads of different but... episodes or, or, or short films. Um by um, Oak Studios which is Neil Bloomkamp's uh, independent film production company cool um, and like most anthologies that, that, that we've spoken about and we've seen and read is a bit hit and miss there's some good um, um, films or short films in there but it kind of pissed me off because yes they are short films he's using big bad yeah. words there but they don't end so so no, well, that's because they're all um, they were their treatments. Yeah, I know, but so they're not going to end because in that, like the that, Sigourney Weaver one. No, some of them do and some of them don't. <clears throat> yeah, the short ones do, but then they're shit. But the so they were supposed to be treatments yeah, I, for films that were out for tender that's not the right yeah, word but you but, know what but I mean. it's hard to proof of concept films yeah but, but it's hard to get really positive about it when when it's just and it's yeah. like yeah the Sigourney Weaver one's really frustrating yeah because that's that looks like it could be a fucking awesome film yeah but it's, um, no one picked it up but the, and you the, watched it on Netflix yeah that's weird why well because it was on Amazon for a long long time oh, maybe it was Amazon I thought it was Netflix oh I was quite sure it was on Netflix fair enough maybe they picked it up yeah or it could it could be absolutely yeah gee it's one o'clock in the morning i'm you know chopping and changing between them but yeah there, there's some really ropey ones in there as well like um there's one with a chef that just brings out some random piece of equipment and basically just cuts his hand off or well that is that the um infomercials yeah there there's about six of those in there yeah yeah and it's like well one would have done on like saturday night live there's no really need to to repeat them all with just different you know um contraptments it's really hard to do this podcast when you two are watching the telly 
He says, I'm, I'm not watching the telly, I'm you listening. Are watching I'm the the telly. Telly. You were talking about we were talking about the infomercials. No, you're watching the football. I'm not watching the football. <laughs> you both bloody are. We're not watching the football. No, we're not. Ooh. It's like I'm talking Shoot. to myself. Shoot! Shoot! Ooh, no. right, so that was out studios. <laughs> then I watched Jungle Cruise. Oh, the rock. If anyone's listening. The rock. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So this and, is um, Emily I've forgotten. Who was the lady? Oh yeah. And And also which you don't get no, I mean, from and the... was... No, I know, what? I know what you okay. meant. But also what you don't get from the trailers Feisty. or any of the promo oh, no. is it's got Jack Whitehall in it as well. Yeah, yeah well, he that. got um, there was a big uproar when he took the part and then went because this has been it's been knocking about for a good couple of years. It was another one of those COVID delays. I think. Yeah, so yeah. It's, so you think back, so that means it was two years in the making before that, and he got a major backlash because he's not gay, but he's playing a very camp. Um, he is gay in the film. Yeah, oh, I haven't seen it, but yeah. so yeah, so he's playing a gay person. So there was, Indeed. so that's probably why they. What is he? Um, he's obviously not allowed to play a gay person because no. he's not gay. No, 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 no. no, we, oh, no, no. This really winds me up. I will not be commenting on this one. <laughs> no, but what's the point I, of I being can... an actor if you can only play? Yeah, the, the to be fair, yeah, you are. method actors are going to be out of a job soon because they won't be out of method anymore. Yeah. Anyway, that's the difference. But yeah, that's why. But that that is the reason why there was a there was a, a a backlash to probably three years ago, about so that's probably why they've kept his part in it, kind of low key. Yeah, which which is a shame because as as the bit character in something like this, because you know, because you'll get them like in Mummy, there is Thing Bob's brother. Same with this, that he's Emily Blunt's brother. He does like a token role, but but he's actually does some good scenes in it, and I, I thought it was actually quite good. That Disney actually I had... quite like the bloke. I yeah, think he yeah, does yeah. it quite. He, he, he's got that specific kind of role, but he does that quite well. Yeah, but I, I thought it was good that Disney actually, you know, brought him out as being gay in the film. Yeah, you know, particularly from from the t time the film was set as well. Yeah, yeah. for for Disney as well. You know, yeah. I mean, in the, how precious they um, are. As <laughs> as a film, um, it was kind of what I expected and not very good. Um, so so one of the great things about disney films particularly the, the the cartoons as we've spoken about before is you go back and, and you can repeat watch them i've got no inclination to watch jungle cruise ever again it, it's trying to be many things um it's trying to be pirates of the caribbean it's trying to be almost indiana jones all that kind of good stuff and it's not it just kind of falls it's almost like short. they brought out another film to match the name of a ride on their theme park <laughs> yeah um but also there's uh, uh, they, they, they try and make out that Dwayne and uh, Emily are, are having, you know, they get, get get together. Is she smelling what the rock is cooking? Well, yeah. <laughs> but while, while there's chemistry between them, it's more like brother and sister. I mean, it's, it's just like watching Marty McFly kiss his mum. You know, um, <laughs> you can tell that they're friends and they get on really well. It was Leah Thompson, though. <laughs> but they, they just don't work as a you know, romantically involved couple. Also, as I said, the film... Also, is it like eight times the size of her? Yeah, yeah well, there's nothing wrong with that, Brett. I mean, it's okay to... No, I'm just, you know... women, all men. Um, but she, also, as a, as a film... She's not going to be on a jungle cruise much longer. <laughs> it, it tries to be many things and falls short on all of them, really. Um, yeah, it kept the kids entertained, but again, that they haven't mentioned it ever since. So, um, if it's free, maybe give it a watch if you've got nothing else for kids. Out, out of interest, just from the... the cause your kids are a bit younger have they got any sort of understanding of like the rock and like how massive he is or is he just is he just dwayne johnson the actor i know, Do you know like, no it can mean no well, when they... he's on screen they, they went oh he's big no, I was joking. Like, no, 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 wait, wait. no, no. Do you know what I mean? Though, because like, yeah, I mean, we've known no him for like me. twenty years before that, and seen him become no, the no. actor no. from WWE. Was he just like that big bloke who's in films? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very oh, much that's so. quite weird, actually. Yeah. No, just um, just wondered. Next one uh, was Voyages, which is on Sky Movies. Um, so we looked at the trailer of this a few podcasts ago. So this is the one um, with Colin Farrell, um, Ty Sheridan's in it, and Lily Rose Depp is in it as well. So this is the one where Earth's failing. They have to save or, or, or they find a planet where there may be life, but the only way they can get there is by sending basically embryos or, or, or with kids. Uh, or sorry, they, they were going to Oh yeah, I do remember seeing they, the trailer for this kids, now, yeah. Yeah, on a long-term mission where basically they're not going to get there until they have grandkids. 
Colin Farrell goes with them. And is, this is the one where... Is that they, the one with the dude that had Ready Player One in it as well? Yeah. I've forgotten his name. Yeah. Uh, Ty, isn't that Ty? Pass, uh, it might be, yeah. Uh, Parsifal. <laughs> is it? Is it? I just know his name from Ready Player One. I don't know his real name. But yeah, so yeah, I know, I know what you're on about now. Yeah, yeah so did, this but... is the one where they drink the, that blue liquid and it basically basically suppresses all of their emotions and you know, feelings and all and that. And drives. Kind of angst. Yeah. Um, then they cotton on to the fact that it's got something in it. So they, a couple of them stop taking it. And lo and behold, would you Adam and Eve it? Literally almost. Um, uh, things start falling apart. Colin Farrell dies. He gets killed by, Spo- by spoilers. Yeah, that's right. He gets killed by an alien. Or, he dies in lots of films he. nowadays. Um, and the, the kids, as I said, start you know getting emotions, getting angry, fighting. It turns into Lord of the Flies in space. Um, it's pretty much as we thought it was going to be from the preview. It's it's a bit near me. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, again, don't go out of your way to watch it. It reminded me a little bit of there was a series i'm just trying to remember the name without googling it where it was like uh generations of families were on this space voyage and you were kind of watching them and they've been yeah, on yeah, this yeah. ship for years and that and then babylon you five the, no you were mon- monitoring the people on the earth but then the twist was that they didn't realize the spaceship had never taken off and they were all living in this thing for like generations and it was all being monitored and all that so they think they're in space head towards this planet Wasn't and they're that, not they're still the one with Halle Berry in it no it was it was yeah, a series it was about three or four episodes yeah it's, I, I, it's not an original storyline um yeah so as I said four out of ten don't don't bother um next one I'm only going to give a brief mention because it's not really a podcasty type film but if you're more interested in a real life thriller than the courier with benedict cumberbatch uh Cum- cumberbatch it, it, it is a really good watch it's about um uh, a normal salesman in in the 60s that goes undercover uh, uh, as a spy basically uh, as a mi5 operative or for the mi5 to russia um to basically work with somebody who wants to defect to get secrets from um khrushchev at the time tries to stop the you know the whole bear pigs thing um really good film but that's what i want to say on it does it use magic no next um <laughs> next is again something that we watched the trailer of um a few podcasts going and this is the guilty with jake gyllenhaal so if you remember from the trailer it was literally just the words on the screen oh, is that the one where he answers that he's the 999 yeah, yeah, yeah. 911 yeah. answer call man yeah yeah um, no, that, that was that looked good i was i was interested in that so it's all Tell right me more. it's so, so yeah so he oh, walla, walla, he, walla. <laughs> <laughs> so he basically plays a cop that's being investigated and has been on suspension or whatever but it's part of that he has to do the, the whole cool cool operator cool handler cool handler thank you um and yeah he does a bit of, of, of calls at the start of the film you can tell he's got anger issues um because he loses his temper quite a bit with some of the callers because they're just phoning up for no reason or, or, or like hoax callers aren't not they? hoax calls but it's like yeah you know, it's, one, it's one a giant rabbit called frank <laughs> no but i've been mugged by a woman in my car and she's run off with my laptop uh, i'm a really important person oh what how did she get in your car oh she was just in my car i let her in um uh, can you describe it? Well, she was wearing a uh, revealing stilettos. Yeah, exactly. So it's like she's a hooker, damn it. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then a call comes in from a, a woman who says she's been kidnapped. So he, he has to then try and solve where this woman and her um, kidnapper are uh, in, in the car and all that kind of good stuff, and also try and save her kids. Um, it's okay. There's a few twists. This is this is one of those films I think where. Uh, we're going to look back in a few years time and, and instantly recognize that it was shot in lockdown or while the pandemic was going on because it's literally jake gillinghall in a in a what's supposedly a busy call handling facility but i was just on his desk type and, thing, and yeah. everyone's 10 or 15 feet yeah. apart there's no interaction and it's a perfect film for that because it's basically him talking to phones or, and people on the phone even at one point they get him he has to go in his in a different room so we can carry on working on the case it's like yeah okay um it, it i think that's, if you're going to do a film in the in the pandemic this is probably the, that right kind of mentality but it's so blatant when you're watching it that it's filmed and that while well, the pandemic's going on because we know 
Um, overall, it's okay. I, I'd probably give it a six and a half out of ten. It's worth a watch, but it's not going to rock your world. Um, because it's Halloween month, I thought I'd better give a, a, a horror slasher film a watch. So, so again, on Netflix, there's there's one out called There's Someone Inside Your House. Um, features like sort of Sydney Park and Theodore Peller and some, some what I guess are new up and coming stars. Um, really original storyline to this one. So in a small town, some teenagers um, start getting picked off by a man who wears a mask. Ah, but the twist, this mask is a, is a version of their own face. Ooh. Um, yeah. That, that was the, the only real twist in, in, in it that, that you're not going to get from from watching the film uh, avoid this one at all costs go and watch a decent slasher th thriller that's already been made it's not very good they, they try and make it stranger things with the quirky teens that are you know trying to solve it or and avoid getting bumped off um and you know even netflix tries says it's like a cross between halloween and and stranger things it's not really it's just got some quirky kids in it uh staying on netflix I can, do, do you what do you work for a living or i or... know oh, yeah, but i don't sleep um but yeah the, the last one on my list is uh a film called kate so this is with uh mary uh elizabeth winstead and woody harrelson um uh, again just just listen to the premise of this one okay so an assassin working in tokyo is poisoned on our last job and only has 24 hours to live and get revenge <laughs> so again a storyline that's been there in several films the likes of um what was it crank that has some of this yeah thing. crank with yeah. jason stay firm and probably a series of 24 yeah and, and <laughs> lots of other films as well um, Mary Elizabeth for winter that was she's the one from um scott pilgrim and stuff like that, and he, she's with you and mcgregor now yeah so even though the storyline is familiar and and you yeah, know the, the likes of um milkshake whatever it was that um what was it gunpowder milkshake oh yeah that i watched the other the other week this is better with than karen gillen yeah so th this doesn't try and be tarantino it knows what it's doing you know it's, it's not as good as you know john woo type films but it, it it's it does a does a well winstead saved a lot of the films she's been in apart from that die hard one where she's Bruce Willis's she, daughter she, <laughs> she, that one that was saving that really does well in the no film. amount could save that she you know she, she actually properly acts in the film you know it's not just one of those action heroes because even you go back and watch sky high when she's in that and that's a kid's film and she <laughs> she, she the, the play and twist on that is even you know you could tell she was going to be someone good after even being in like that cause... yeah uh, and there's some nice touches so so she ends up um work or saving um uh, the daughter of, of one of the guys that um had, that, that she assassinated similar to <laughs> gunpowder milkshake um but this one's more of a teen from tokyo who swears and is a bit in your face and then she ends up trying to help a bit like black widow <laughs> <laughs> but but they have they have a good on-screen um relationship between them that they work well does she meet a bold french bloke with glasses <laughs> <laughs> um kate uh, uh, it, it, it's actually a really good film woody harrelson obviously plays woody harrelson in it but he does it well um he didn't have to earn too much money uh, i think i'm at do, the bit now where i've just money. had too much woody harrelson you can't have well I didn't say, but it, at least it's woody harrelson as opposed to what he did in 2012 and they you know they don't make mm. him do anything stupid in it you know so he plays i still um, like him but i think i've just done no oh it's woody harrison again it's almost like well it's the same character in everything but it is woody harrison mm -hmm. um and that there, there is a, a sort of twist in this but you see it coming from the offset um but it's still worth a watch there are good performances in it, and there's good fight sequence in this nothing over the top like in gunpowder milkshake um that's about it that i'm going to talk about today um yes lots of other stuff um the, the other yeah so, so i'm not going to talk about Anything you're going to talk about it aren't you you're going to say it no, I'm not. it's on the edge of your lips go no, on no go that's on. it no that's it now okay then i'll save it for next week <laughs> okay <laughs> moving across then for the second hour of the podcast <laughs> Dam <laughs> damien what have you been watching well to be fair there's not much in the news and not much trailers yeah 
Yeah, it doesn't give you full license. It's just you waffle. Me, you asked me what I watched. Welcome to Pool Faction, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair enough. We appreciate it because we I haven't had a lot of time to watch much this week, so it's good that someone is. Yeah, he's got a point because yeah. I've watched hardly anything. Have you just watched Quantum Leap again? <clears throat> I have watched Quantum Leap again this week. Um, Sam actually managed to get home hey. briefly. Was it in the right time, though? It was in the right time. Oh. He switched places with Al because of a lightning strike or something. And uh, so Al was the one everyone could see, yeah. not see. And um, Sam had to figure out how to get... Well, got home and then had to figure out how to switch it all back again. And then obviously lost his memory again. So See, that was a good one because I remember watching that at that time and it was like watching Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, he, it's a really good episode. Home, but I, then he, yeah. then he I sound really in. unenthusiastic, but that's just because I'm in a bad mood and I've got a <laughs> this headache. This is the happy horror oh, yeah. on that, episode. <laughs> well, on a side note, that someone has actually animated the final episode of Dungeons and Dragons now with all that is on the yeah, internet I saw somewhere. About that. And they've like sampled the voices from other bits and that and done it as close as they can. Because the script was always there. So you yeah. can see. If, um, Avenger turned back into Dungeon Master's son and all that sort of stuff and it's all yeah but sorry carry on that's a the worthwhile news. segue no. <laughs> I think it's been, on a, it's been out a long time oh, okay. yeah it's... a very long time um, yeah so there's Quantum Leap obviously and I also watched a film I think it was on Netflix I'm pretty certain it's Netflix called Awake. Awake I don't think we've done the trailer for this I don't think it's kind of one of those that's kind of slipped under the radar and to be fair, there's a very good reason that it slipped under the radar. The um, premise is um, hum humankind's unable to sleep and think clearly because of some sort of slow solar solar flare. I think it's called work. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so yeah, something some solar yeah, flare so, happens. So, Everyone so suddenly stops. We did this on a podcast a few weeks ago. Did we? Yeah. Oh well, well I can shut up then. No. Because this could be a first listener, <laughs> which was our point earlier. Go carry on, David. Did you really watch it? Yeah. It's shit, isn't it? Yeah. It's absolutely appalling. Well, yeah, but carry on. No, oh, I don't need to. Hey, what, I, what, I, I do, don't want to waste time no, talking about it. just give us the basic premise. You don't have to say. you haven't watched much this week, so yeah, <laughs> tell us. Tell us more, everyone. <laughs> you don't look like you're, yeah. you're two minutes of ahead time. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that, and yeah, we see that. All right. All right, yeah. I'll just get my coat. Yeah, people can't sleep. But one little girl can and some old biddy can and who's being looked after in a research centre. Her mum says, no, 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 we're not going to go to the research centre. We're going to run away. Five minutes later, we're going to the research centre. But now the person that's going to take us to the research centre has been shot. So we've got to make our own way there. And we've got to somehow, for some reason, go past the prison that's just been <laughs> opened up and everyone can walk free. But it's OK because it's a friendly prisoner. And the twist or the the figure the way to figure out why everyone can't sleep everyone just seems to ignore the obvious about what happened to the girl at the very beginning of the film and then she figures it out at the end there's hundreds of scientists in this facility what happened to her at the beginning of the film she is in a car crash and dies for a minute and they they bring her back to life so you can guess how you can make everyone else start sleeping again. Arse gravy. That's what it is. is it, yeah, it's a shame because it could have been really good. Could have been. Yeah. But it's just, it's one of those films where, and I know that you have to have characters make, you know, silly decisions or, you know, their, their motivations are, are kind yeah, of what kills it. To drive on, the plot. Yeah. But even, you can, I can even forgive, no, no, we're not going to go to the research centre. <laughs> If they then if she then changed her mind 25 minutes later or something yeah. but it's literally you know within five minutes of of nothing really happening so oh, no no we're gonna go there now if there'd been what like the a fuck? huge explosion yeah and blocked off a road or yeah know, or whatever or, or yeah so, that was the only op option yeah. for them exactly so yeah crap um anything else go out on a high was it was there anything good other than well I, i've watched some telly that just isn't isn't um Our type podcast of... worthy the yeah. night stalker the martin clunes real crime drama thing is about... that any good just so i know it's good in a in a real life crime sense as yeah. in it's, it's not dramatic it's very 
steady yeah. and he does a really is good it job like procedural type thing no no it's no. not it but it's more it's it's more character driven based on the the like the, what the guys are doing to try and catch him rather than being you know all bells and oh, whistles cool. and all that kind of stuff monday night tv yeah but it was really good yeah it's well done um silent witness watch that and then a shock twist you're gonna love this paul you're gonna absolutely love this mm -hmm. they had a trailer at the very end to trail next season and amanda burton makes a phone call to emilia fox's character asking for help oh yeah i don't know what emilia fox's character is called because continuity yeah so they, they could be going back to their roots wow it's like all, all, all the um um, soap operas all joining together and doing a cross yeah, I saw that soap today. opera thing about climate change. That's me done. That is my, I think it was eight minutes. Whoa. I'll have to. I'll talk get that down to about two. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to talk a bit slower then. <laughs> so hard, Harry Summers. <laughs> what, what? what did you say? What was it? Happy Harry Hardcore. What, what was the film? Where is it? He played that underground DJ. I've never played an underground DJ. Are you having some DJ? sort of moment again? I've no, never played an underground DJ in a movie. No, there's that film from the 90s with um, Christian Slater where he plays. Happy, pump up the happy volume. Hardcore. Yeah, pump up the volume. <laughs> that's exactly the same. Happy, <laughs> happy Harry Hardcore. Yeah, but he, pump that, up the volume. what's his name in it? I can't remember, hardcore. but I don't think happy, it's Happy ha Harry it's Hardcore. Like that. I'm sure it is. It's the one where everybody knows that the dice is loaded. This started to sound like Postman Pat when he first. <laughs> <laughs> everybody <laughs> knows <laughs> his bright red. Mark friend. Hunter. No, he's DJ. What's the name of the DJ that he plays? Mark Hunter. No, that's his actual character. He can't go on pirate radio. Hi, hey, this is Mark Hunter. Don't come and find me. You don't know who I am. RJ. No, he plays something he's got a name in it like happy harry harry hardcore or something well, it says rj but he's a nerd during the day and at night he's known as rj no it's not it's not you you carry on and tell us about telly but i'm i'm looking oh at... oh so you now you're not going to pay attention uh, yeah, sorry but, but, hard but... hard harry hard harry go right there we go well it's not really Happy. happy harry hardcore is it Whatever. <laughs> that might be the uk remake yeah <laughs> it's the 90s it's the 90s fantasia was kicking off yeah it was with um that other bloke that was a name it was a guy called gerald whatever it was i don't know that was that was a real one just talk about bring telly. it back just and, please. And, and, and voodoo ray yeah <laughs> i was there ignoring all that music at the time and now pretend to like it like everyone else was but anyway that's in the past. What have I been watching this week? That's the Don't past we're worried about. Don't start the film the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have been watching. First of all, I watched the actual proper final episode of Marvel What If. Because I thought it finished last week and I talked about it. But it's only a two-parter, wasn't it? Oh. So I did think it was a weird ending. I may have said that. But the, the final episode sees a crossover of basically all the previous episodes and the watcher kind of picks people from different um multiverse earths various heroes to become the guardians of the multiverse and fight ultron and it's very well done there's a lot of detail to previous episodes and stuff like that so some of the episodes that you thought weren't that good were probably not that good for a reason because they but they needed that little bit in there to then so it made the fine up the finale even better so it, you know it did work and there's some nice twists and turns and i'm imagining there will be a series two so but where this stands in line with because apparently this is part of the mcu now so where this stands in line with what happens in the films and stuff it remains to be seen but i'm sure if there's a a couple of characters that start getting a bit better rating than others we may see them drift through the multiverse into the on-screen marvel cinematic universe or well on screen the, the real life for the live action that's what i'm looking for the live action <laughs> version the but it's but it is worth a watch uh party four is back as well which is always a bonus and um yeah definitely worth a watch that's all on disney plus 
I've also watched uh, mainly for educational purposes as we're doing myths and legends Hercules the fantasy action adventure starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson oh so not not the um, Disney cartoon no, that's we, what I was thinking <laughs> no we watched this one because like Danny DeVito for, for a 12 <laughs> it's very violent <laughs> and you know it's good when the kids are there banging the table at the level of violence and you're like it did say 12 didn't did, it do kids bang tables still apparently so no. good 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 kill everyone they do as the rock gets a lion and rips its mouth wide open <laughs> huzzah he got him <laughs> but but it's an awesome team though because you've got like the rock as hercules you've got ian mcshane as amaphiris who's like the seer who keeps seeing visions of his own death and that kind of becomes a running joke you've got rufus shul or Sewell, however you want to say it there's Autolycus, I think that's how you say it. As Askel Henny as like Tidius, he's like this wild barbarian dude. Um Rebecca Ferguson is Ergina, who basically is like for lack of without means to sound sexist, the hot chick with the bow and arrow. <laughs> Cause you got all these dudes and then there's like um you got Reese Richie who's um Iolus, who's is like Hercules's nephew who's the storyteller so as they go around they're like see as hercules uses the strength of zeus to do this and the the power of that and he's like and john hart is king coitus he's like the um or king coitus i was gonna say really <laughs> king, Coy <laughs> king, king did, did, coitus did, did, did is slip into a different film then? King coitus is definitely a different film i don't we think don't, that would be a 12. we don't want to slip into that one and they wouldn't be banging at this then that would be a psag lesson um joseph fines pops up <laughs> and a disciplinary um, for you yeah Tamina Snooker is also in it the uh, wrestling lady who's she gets a cameo because they need some like you know people that sort of of a Polynesian nature but what made it really interesting and I don't know if this is something the Rook's doing but I only spotted it um, watch it this week there's a bit where he like saves someone's life and um, they're a bit cobby about it because they're well, it's Ian McShane and he he'd envisioned this glorious death by a fiery arrow and he, and he as the arrow's coming by him he kind of drops his arms and does like the big pose like he's waiting for this glorious death and the and um, Hercules reaches forward and like stops the arrow with his hand before it gets to him and he's like that was supposed to be my glorious death and he goes you're welcome and then he walks off and it was just like years before Moana but like is that like is this something the rock's been throwing in his films you know like when nobody really paid attention to i'll be back outside the terminator for years and then suddenly realized that arnie had been dropping it in like in every single yeah. film he'd been in so like i'm wondering now but yeah it's good very violent for um to be honest a kid's film and there is some there is some proper graphic violence and real freaky stuff that got me some cool teacher points table banging goodness even bits where they're like that and there is one bit where the rock does an f-bomb which is great for a 12 <laughs> but you know <laughs> i'm a cool teacher now <laughs> so mr summer says watch this i'm like it says 12. <laughs> as the ta's are looking at me like what's going on but yeah good fancy drama very much i would call it almost a kind of fantasy no it's nowhere near as good as tombstone but it's in that kind of way where they've rewritten I it wasn't in a way that. no that's the, <laughs> how, not what? not as good as tombstone yeah but i no, don't but even they, see how you can put that the same tower. conversation you've got, but you've got like hercules and his gang and they kind of ride into town it almost is a western one the fancy route. they ride into town for the people that have hired them and saved the day and then realize they might have helped the wrong side out and then it's like do they take the gold or do they go back and write the wrong that they may have just caused it's a bit like that so you kind of get that and obviously like you know being the rock he, he'll make the right decision in the end cool. but it is that kind of i'd say it's almost although it's a bit based on the greek myth it's it's almost brett ratner directs it and it's almost very much a kind of magnificent seven type vibe to it where they sort of ride into town tombstone magnificent seven What's well, I, I was just sat here thinking, I never thought when we started this podcast eight, nine months ago that we would be spending eight minutes on Hercules. It's a fantasy just... film. <laughs> it's as good as Tombstone, Daniel. <laughs> yeah. I said it's, it's up there. Not... It's in the same bracket. I said it's not as good as Tombstone, but it's got that kind of vibe of... They, you know, the it's not as good as The Godfather, but... <laughs> <laughs> we all know The Godfather 2 is better. Um... <laughs> 
But it's got that sort of, you know, that like they've they skipped through with the dialogue like they do in Tombstone, where everyone is probably talking way cooler with one-liners than they ever would in real life. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just thinking this is going to come back and haunt you in but, loads of podcasts to come. Mm. Well, it's on Amazon Prime. Go and give it a watch. Oh, show what do you think? With show, bated sh- breath. Sh- show, show, show see it. if I'm going to be hitting the table. And, show and show it to your kids. Yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> probably it, won't after that review. <laughs> he's only five. Oh, yeah, he's got to be 12, apparently. But, you know, the others might like it. Uh, the other thing, because it has been a busy week, the main thing that I was really impressed with this week, I was listening to the British Invaders podcast, which you can check out at britishinvaders.com, and they were doing a review of the... Tombstone. Um, <laughs> not Tombstone. <laughs> they were doing a review of the uh, Philip K. Dick's Electric Dreams TV series, which I watched when it was on probably five or six years ago now. Yeah, about that. I think off the top of my head. And... um. But they were talking about an episode called The Commuter, which I must have just missed. And it just Did sounded... Liam Neeson in it? No. <laughs> no. And, um, yeah, so I thought... And they were explaining it, and I thought, this sounds like a good one. So I I found it. Again, it's on Amazon. Um, you, you do have to buy the episodes on Amazon Prime now. But um, it's worth a watch. You can, buy, you can buy the whole series or buy an episode, so it's easy to do. But, um... And basically, in the in the episode, it's Timothy Spall plays a guy called Ed Jacobson, and he's a railway worker at Woking train station. And he's got a son who he's married to uh, Rebecca uh, Manley, who is in um, all the sort of This Is England TV shows, and she was also in The A Word as well, if you remember that. And she pops, she's popped up in TV dramas through the years. Um, you'll recognise her, but you won't be able to place her. She's one of those people. Yeah, so their, their husband, they've got an older son called Sam, played by Anthony Boyle, who's got sort of, um, he's having psychotic episodes, so he's not, you know, he's sort of older teen, maybe early 20s. He's, he's having psychotic episodes, so it's not the, the perfect life you get, and you kind of get flashbacks where he's a kid and everything's fine, and then you see him like punching walls as a kid and like headbutt and all that. So you know that. Was he watching Hercules got, at the time? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you know he's enjoying it. You know he's enjoying it. Um, Hercules, that is not this. <laughs> You're putting me off now. Yeah. So you, he's got this episode, but anyway, there's this day at work when Ed's at work, and um, this woman uh, comes in and she wants a ticket to Macon Heights, and he's like shut up that doesn't exist and it's like where is this place? i you think know? i remember this one and she's called linda isn't she's, it kind of she's played I'll by shut up. Tup- I'll, leave you to... I'll, I'll do it for yeah and she's played by tuppence middleton which is like i've seen her before in other things but i never knew that was her name and i just think that's brilliant <laughs> uh, tuppence but um yeah so after a while this this kind of goes on for a bit and he kind of and he's like well what train are you on and all that and what how long does it take to get there and all this and you know another day she comes in again and in the end he kind of gets driven to like well this is ridiculous and in the end he gets on the train and he's found out it's like 15 minutes on the train or whatever so he's on the train trying to figure out what's going on and then he set his i think he sets his phone or his watch for 15 minutes and as he gets to that point the train's sort of slowing down it's not stopping but you look around people are getting up and they're just literally opening the train door jumping off and walking across the field and he's just like don't know what this is but he he follows and he finds this um really weird kind of idealistic town where everything seems perfect and amazing and that and he what they thought of... milton Keynes was going to be <laughs> is it not <laughs> well i've been to its great bowl <laughs> and um yeah and then then when he comes back from there um he kind of arrives back on the train and he goes home and everything and his, his wife's crying and that and he's like what's the matter love and she's like I'm just thinking of what could have been and all that and he goes oh it's alright and then when he goes to work he suddenly realises some of his co-worker says triggers that that's not what it was because his co-worker was on about not having any kids or anything and then the next day he's going about he's got three kids and all that and he goes home and he suddenly realises his son no longer exists he's been like wiped out of existence spoilers and um, 
Well, I'd say most of the last five minutes been a spoiler. You've just told us. Yeah, true. But it's, fine. it's, been, but it's, really it's been out for a while. It's I mean, really good. I mean, you know, it's been out be five or six years, and the book that it was written from came out like the nineteen forties <laughs> or something. So it's not like it's... I was only joking. As I, I know, no, and I'm just saying to any of our angry listeners, going, I wanted to watch that. So yeah, and then he he has to go back to making heights and try and work out what happened. I'll leave it there. But really good episode. Timothy Spall could play anything really and do it well. You know, he's been a I think legend. He'd struggle with Conan. Is what? I think he'd struggle with Conan. <laughs> oh, I think he'd do it. He'd be an older Conan. Yeah. A but, retired um, Conan. Conan's Yeah, an older retired Conan. But you know, he, he can do it. And the cast in this, like uh Tom Brook turns out, Holy Squires is in it, and Reed. Uh, there's people in it who are almost what I'd call like British character T V actors who you kind the of recognise that pop up the and staple stuff. Staple of films and programs like that yeah and and, sh- and, it, and, and it's only like about an hour at the most good episode as far as anthologies go this is one that someone needs to like pick up and maybe redevelop again into like you know th- there's a series here or at least like a decent film and um i can't believe that the only one i missed the first time around might have been the only one that was any good i think it was that's why i remember it because i did yeah. watch them all and that maybe if you described another episode yeah. to me i might go oh, maybe yeah, i, I don't that, know but... the running order so maybe i'd binned it off by then and yeah. like that was the might have been the last episode or something but yeah amazing episode really really good and maybe, maybe um... that's next week where brett reads another <laughs> yeah <laughs> do, you do you remember electric sheep or whatever yeah no i don't think so which is a shame because Philip K. Dick does seem to write good stories it's just um i think, I think it, it was originally on channel any... four so is it not on all four it yeah, was yeah, channel like that, four yeah. and somebody yeah it was on it was on channel four when it yeah first so it came might out. still because they they try they do keep most of their stuff on all four don't they yeah i think yeah i think it has been but now it's all i think it's, it's either sold or amazon and, yeah. or whoever the u.s because i think it was them and a the u.s partner um it's not important i just wondered who it was but yeah but it's on that amazon in the uk i'm sure it's around other places around the world wherever you are but check it out it's probably the best episode out of all of them and we've just ruined it for you well, we, don't, we haven't told me the whole ending. This is true. We, we've, we've tantalised you enough to want to go and watch it <laughs> without telling you what happens at the end when they all die. No, they don't. Or do they? <laughs> they're on an island. <laughs> and they're lost. A traffic no. island. <laughs> so, yeah. Milton Keynes. So, that was, <laughs> that was Electric Dreams of the Commuter. <clears throat> there you go. And that is pretty much all I watched until I remember something else in a minute and shout over everyone else. Right, but, that'll be too late because we'll be into the news by then let's just get out of the way 21 jump street didn't watch it right fine love island what it's not even on oh well <laughs> right, the <laughs> one that you watched the fuck would how, I know if it's on you? married at first sight finished married at first sight Australia, Australia. <laughs> no okay okay News desk. The news. News items. News items. Welcome to the news. <laughs> where you will hear news <laughs> about stuff. News. News. News, news. news of the week. Oh. Oh, welcome to news. Uh, where we're going to look at some of the major events that have happened over the last week. Uh, Damien's going to bring up these hot topics. I'll uh, fill in the details and then we may or may not discuss them if we feel they're important or not. So, Damien. Sounds like a good plan. What's the first item on our news items? The first item on our news items. News items. News items. News items. Is DC Comics reveal the latest Superman character is bisexual? Yep. Uh, the big thing to understand on this, because it's 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 took off a little bit in all sorts of directions across social media some people are burning superman comics some people are now buying superman comics because of this but this is jonathan kent the son of clark kent and lois lane who has been taking on the superman mantle for a little while now in the comic books and he it's jonathan kent who has come out as a bisexual and um so um, there's, as I say, there's a lot of outcry about this, but to be fair, way a lot of the mainstream media have been sort of putting it out is that it is Clark Kent. So a lot of people are like, they're interfering with the character. He's never been gay or bisexual or anything. And it's actually, it's not Clark Kent. It's Jonathan Kent. So 
you know, he's kind of a newer character and they do what they want with him. Surely. Yeah. But the but to be fair, a lot of the spin on the mainstream media is like they've not actually mentioned that it's not Clark Kent. So a it's lot of people Superman, a lot they? of people feel yeah, it's just or Superman. Bicycle, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people are like they're interfering yeah. with the character, he's never been like that before, whatever. The character's still the same. He hasn't, but Jonathan Kent is the guy who is Superman at the moment. That that's the big bit to point out on that really, but you know that point, is it kind that, of a bit nothing he news because it's quite Newsweek out in the states or something. Oh no no no! It, no it, I think this would be big it, news. This is, no, no in the states, what, you know, the there, are, there are people who now want their Superman tattoos removed because he's now bisexual. And um, but maybe we should like, get John Bon Jovi's opinion on it then. Yeah, he'd probably just take the money off someone else, like he did to Skid Row. <laughs> but like, never um, forgive him for that. Never. But um, yeah, so there's a lot, you know, Superman, bizarrely, is seen as like an American icon, even though he's from Krypton. But, um, so people are taking that as like... He's probably got dual citizenship. Yeah, it must be by now. Well, no, not during the Trump reign. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we're going to build a kryptonite wall. But, um, no, it would have been like, um, <laughs> it would be seen as like, uh, in certain areas, I can imagine it will be seen as an attack on their country or their well, rare use. But he should have been in Marvel. He wouldn't have had those problems. <laughs> they're, they're they're open to all genders and races in Marvel. Well, so are DC. Yeah, it's just joking. more the just yeah, more the, the fan, the, some of the fans. <clears throat> but that that's the big outcry. Um, well, some people are celebrating it, but the, the the most of the media attention is all the people going, "What have they done this to Superman for?" And it's like they haven't. Well, they have, but it's not Clark Kent; it's Jonathan Kent. So, you know, the son of Kalal is a uh, bisexual. Cool. Clark's Good still for him. fine. Clark's still fine. Lois is still happy. You know, they're getting on. There might be another kid soon, as long as he wears a. There is one condom. thing that confuses me. Go on. And this is my ignorance to the whole okay superman history Mystique. of the last 20 odd years or it could be me misremem misremembering more rats but in more rats <laughs> dante has a long old conversation about whether superman and lois can have kids that's a great conversation yeah so well, they, no, well, they, they were they were they were theorizing over it and whether or not Superman's powers would be that he would blow such a load it would yeah. shoot a hole for a back exactly, <laughs> and then he was saying that the only way he could bang her was with a kryptonite condom, but that would kill him. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but obviously, so maybe, in the, in the inter intervening thirty years, probably maybe you know maybe that Superman's, question's been answered. Maybe his maybe his rhythms improved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> or you know maybe. He's, I don't know. Maybe once he finishes, he has to go and get Lois back from the moon. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't really tackled that in that much detail in the comic books, but um, but there is a sun there, and um, so something happened. Something happened. Something yeah. Went, yeah, something went well. So yeah, but um, maybe yeah. that's go back to his ice Promise. cave thing that he's got. I take all my Superman knowledge from the Christopher Reeve films, yeah. as you might have the for guessed. The Fortress of Solitude. That's the one. Maybe there's something magical there that allows yeah. him to... Or maybe they conceived when he had his powers taken away and he was stuck in that truck stop. No, maybe there maybe there was just a magical shaft in, in the um, <laughs> Fortress of Solitude. Yeah. How do you think Superman does it? Email us in at coltpatchofpodcast at mail.com. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think the music they'd be listening to would be too upbeat and up tempo, would it? It'd be more Phil Collins. No, as no, no. You know what it'll be? One, two, one, two, three, <laughs> four. Comb your hair. Hit your eye. Superman. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's next? In the <clears throat> yeah, let's move yeah. on. So that's where we are. Basically, we've got the important bit down. Yep. And you know, it's a comic book. Get over it, people. Yeah. Move on. The world is the world is an ever changing place. And life reflects art and art reflects life. So, you know, let's do it. Is Next. That what she said? <laughs> Foundation has got a season two. Yes. I it... don't know if that's a real surprise, to be well, fair. The amount of money they put into season one, I guess. Uh, I, I still haven't gone back and uh, watched episode three yet. Um, probably the only thing I haven't watched on telly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt Chernis, the head of program for Apple TV Plus, has released a press statement saying 
that we have been so excited to watch the global audiences embrace the captivating, suspenseful and breathtaking thrill ride that is Foundation that we know how long fans of these beloved Asimov stories have waited to see this iconic work brought to life as a visually spectacular event series. And now we can't wait to showcase even more of the richly layered world, compelling storytelling and stunning world building in season two. Okay. How's that sitting with you, Paul? You're, you're, the, you're the foundation expert on this around this table. Well, you know, they keep mentioning visually stunning. Um, and it is. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. Um, and I have been thinking about it over the last couple of weeks. And I think if if I get my mindset away from its foundation and just say, oh, actually, it's a science fiction series, I might like it a bit better. So you think it it's more of, a, of a, an appeal to people that have never read the books? Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. going to enjoy yeah. it more than people that are fans of the books. But, have, they, have, but, they, have they sold it out? It, no, no, it's just completely different. Um, completely different. And as I you know, when, when we spoke about it before, I, I think I just need to change my mindset because it was all right. You know, looking back and reminiscing over the first two episodes, they were okay. It's just nothing like the book. So I think if I go back in with that you know, mind, uh, mindset, then then I'd probably carry on watching it. I, I'll give it a watch over the next week and, uh, and feedback next week cool cool okay we'll move on hulu's new hellraiser movie announces its pinhead with a twist oh there is a twist she, she hasn't got any pins <laughs> <laughs> blue tack now um again another split fan base some excited some absolutely not excited at all and probably burning up twitter as we speak the new pinhead is jamie clayton who you may recognize from such things as uh roswell new mexico the l word generation q uh the neon demon and uh sense8 which was a huge show that she was in uh, she will be the new pinhead personally I'm quite interested in it because since uh, if it's not going to be um, Doug Bradley then a new twist might be good because all we've had since then uh, just sort of crap look alike -y, sort of there was a fat fin pinhead a thinner pinhead one that kind of looked alright but had a bad script and then there was even that other one where pinhead wasn't even in it and it was Lance Henriksen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like you know like if you can't have the, if you can't have the original you know let's go and do something a bit different with it i mean it's quite good that they're reimagining it slightly as well so it's not just a direct remake they're adding a bit of a new spin on it um yeah i'm, I'm up for seeing what they can do i don't think it's necessarily a bad thing at all i mean you know when because we spoke about neil gaiman um uh, the, the, the other week didn't we and how some of the characters in sandman yeah are, are played by women and the, you know they're not men anymore and all that kind of good stuff and you know the role itself doesn't need to be man or and the female. and the Babylon Five remake as well. Yeah. They said they're going to rejig some of that around because you know why tell the same story again? I've already told it once. You know it's uh, as long as she's like sadistic de demonic bitch, <laughs> then, then, then all well and good. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yep. I, I'm I'm very on board with this and to see what happens next. Cool. Yeah. The, the the thing I'm looking forward to is them actually just doing a good Hellraiser film. And I don't care whether Pinhead's a male, female, or a robot. You know, as, as long as yeah, the film's good. I didn't mind the first three, and the and the one when it turned into a space station. Remember I think I'd given up was. by that point. No, but that was that was like Event well, Horizon. That was that was, <laughs> that was a, but that was a good ending to it because then it ended up like it was a giant space station that then actually turned into the box. Yeah, and it was oh, spoilers if you had watched that twenty years ago, and then um and all that sort of thing so it kind of ended itself and then they started making other ones with other like pinheads and that i think every uh, then pinheads became a bit like um sugar babes you know that it was like a new one every <laughs> week you know and it was just sort of like oh you're the pinhead now i think we've all been pinhead at some point in one of the films you know it's got a bit like that and as i say then one of them didn't have pinhead in it it was just like 
yeah, terrible stuff. But it's all forgotten now. If you if you're really worried and Doug Bradley's the only pin there for you, go and watch it because he's still there. This is another one now, and we'll see how it goes. You never know. Doug might even turn up. That'd be cool. Cool. <clears throat> and finally, in the news, Will Porter has been cast as Adam Warlock. Oh, that means yeah. nothing to me. <laughs> you've seen you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy, though, haven't you? When I have. Two. Yes. Basically, I think he's that big gold dude at the end. In the se- is it the second one? Remember I, that, like, I really lost and- patience with the second one. That once it got oh, it's just nonsense. I must again. admit, I was yeah. The second just, one wasn't as good as it all. Just yeah. Once oh no, can't yeah. be bothered. I'm not even going to talk yeah, about Pol- it. Polter though, I mean, he was in <clears throat> Son of Rambo. He did the Chronicles of Narnia. We're the Millers, the Maze Runner, the Revenant, War Machine. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is his next big one which is due out in 2023 now so there's still a bit of time yet for that but he's been in all sorts of things uh, Bandersnatch as well the yeah. Yeah. Black Mirror Bandersnatch is one you remember um, I remember him more for We're the Millers that's just yeah. Yeah. oh and The Fades such well. a good film he was in the pilot episode of The Fades if you remember that oh, yeah. Yeah. Soon, 2010. Isn't he? James Gunn's just finishing off the um storyboards isn't he he's always on Twitter talking about it and probably picking all the songs (laughs) but but Adam Warlock as far as he is um, is in regards to the Marvel Universe he is um, basically he is actually it'll be interesting if they do this because at one point he was known as him and then he became Adam Warlock and later on he actually uh switched gender as well so um what are you talking about adam warlock the character is going to be playing. oh right okay <laughs> yeah, it'll so be interesting to see i got I, yeah i got well confused take, then where they t- where they take that over the the um over the films because he is a big player in the sort of what they call the marvel cosmic end of the marvel universe sort of the, the space side of it but um we believe we've already seen adam Warlock yeah. as the um, created by Isha to help destroy the Guardians of the Galaxy. You see him come out of that big sort of golden cocoon thing at the end, and um, but now there's obviously someone there to actually play it. So um, that would be very interesting because you know it's a it's a big role that could cross over to lots of um, the other Marvel movies and TV shows. So, but um, that was the news. Big, that was the news. Big news. Big character announced. Exciting to see what happens. That was a news. That was a news. Still the news. <laughs> He's still talking. I know. <laughs> that was the news. That is the news. Drop zone. Drop, drop. Go! Drop. <laughs> 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 That's good. It's comedy gold. <laughs> it was. Right, we've had the news and now we're in the drop zone where we're going to look at the latest releases to hit our... Uh, the internet over the last week it's a bit of a quiet week to be honest we've only got two that we've seen worthy of mentioning three three sorry new new just in hot not, we're not doing the home alone trailer then but um <laughs> we'll save that for when we get close to christmas yeah. episodes but um yeah but there, there is there is some stuff out there a lot of the stuff is already out and being promoted now setting its setting their stalls up for the halloween market but there is a few new just ones. like us really yeah we're definitely. all on the same bandwagon so let's see what we've got for the podcast the first up in the drop zone we've got dead and beautiful coming on november the 4th to shudder and the amc networks is dead and beautiful written and directed by the visionary filmmaker david verbeek it is a uh, vampire a thriller where five rich spoiled asian 20-somethings are suffering from an upper class Inui and unsure how to spend their days when so little is expected from them they search for excitement and the five friends form a circle a group where they will take turns designing a unique extravagant experience for the others but <laughs> things only go wrong when the privileged urbanites awaken after a night out to find that they have developed vampire fangs and an unquenchable thirst for flesh blood an adventure at any price. That's like one of our old nights out. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? At any price. 
Let's watch the trailer, shall we? Let's do this. Hit it! First of all, I respect the fact that they were wearing masks. <laughs> but um, no, I am... I'm, I'm impressed by that, because I think I've had enough of a lot of these sort of American sort of dramas that touch on vampires and werewolves and um, whatever else there <laughs> might be. And... Um, well, you know, everything's all nice and saccharine, and even though like, even it's a bit gritty and edgy, it's not really, and no one gets their hair messed up or anything like that. This looks like it might actually be a bit darker and be, go to a few places that normally get ignored in these sort of CW-type shows. Yeah, I mean, we, we've said it before. The Asian market, when it comes to to violence, to horror, they do a really good job. I'm just sick of vampires, so... I think I'm going to let more, one of you two watch it a, and then tell me whether it's worth me watching or not. But that looks a bit more of a different twist on it because they're, they're not asking to be. They've ended up being and it's kind of... What that's most vampire yeah, films? Yeah, most vampire ever. ones, are, are they're not asking. You're talking, I don't know, is it True Bloods or something? That's where they want to be vampires. I don't get wrong, I, I think it does look yeah. stylish. It does look like it's filmed well. Um, I, I, I think the proof's going to be in the pudding. Um, one thing that really... You know, struck out to me is is how the the characters got on. It reminded me a bit of Tombstone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but it'll be interesting to see what what the spin spin, spin they put on it, and how because uh, you know they they obviously gone into this thinking we're going to have to make it a bit different, other than you know where it's set. Um, I, I the, it all, a lot of the shots kind of remind me of Blade. Um, was it three? Oh yeah, I like I like the fact that they made sure they pointed out that they're really rich as well, so they can pretty much do whatever they like. Yeah, it's explained. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes like, they're doing all this stuff and like, do you have to go to work? <laughs> yeah, but I'm definitely going to watch it if if I can for free. Uh, what do you say is on? Well, it's Hulu, so that. Oh no, Shudder. Well, no, Sorry, Shudder. Shudder. Oh, cool. I was thinking of something else. Shudder and AMC, so we should get it on Shudder. Yeah, yeah sweet. Possibly. Yeah, my my big worry about the film is that maybe the the idea of like you know like you say the the super rich vampires uh, or kids who are now bored who become vampires you know they, they need to keep developing. We don't want to get to a bit where it gets halfway through the film and then it just turns into like let's look at all the crazy stuff we can do now with vampires. Mm. Yeah, you know uh, I think the biggest thing about that is you're not really going to feel sorry for them. Normally, there's a, there's a clutching on heartstrings because I'm, yeah, sure, got some I'm sure one of them's had a hard, but, yeah. I'm sure one of them's had a hard life and might think differently about things. What and then have to fight the others? It could be because I think we saw six and there's five in the promo picture. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it when they do things like that. <laughs> so. Yep. So you'll be able to watch that on November the fourth in North America, the UK, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand. The rest of the world, you're going to have to wait a little bit. So that's Dead and Beautiful on Shudder and AMC. Cool. Next up, we've got... Oh God, here we go. Kazuku Sentai Ten Gokeja. Yeah, you yeah, yeah that wasn't bad. That's the official trailer. Come on then, is there a spill? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Can't get the, the staff, can you? Ten years have passed since... Oh, yeah, actually, let's just do the background first. Right. This is the 10th anniversary commemor commemoration of the Kazuki Sentai Gokeja final episode, which was a Super Sentai team of, uh, basically, Power Ranger pirates, as it you can pretty much translate that as. And uh, ten years have now passed, and the public's gambling activity... Super Sentai Derby Coliseum has been established on Earth and has been hugely popular across every generation. Through the many Super Sentai heroes, there have been targets of bets and they cooperate with the Coliseum project so long as the money is used for defending the Earth. However, one Super Sentai could not be contacted. That team has disbanded and each member gone on their separate paths. It was during this time that Captain Marvelous appeared on Earth issuing a challenge to the Colosseum's administration, but standing opposite from Marvelous is 
Gaiakara, whose views match those of the Colosseums. Is it the Gok Ages or the people of Wrath that have changed from this passage of time? How will Joe, Luca, Doc and Ahim respond to these circumstances? After ten years, an extraordinary battle is about to begin. Look at that, you're on the edge of your seats now. I am, yeah. But it does sound weird they're bringing gambling into a kid's show, but let's see what they're going to do. Hit it. I like the little guitar solo. Yeah. That was, that was nice. Cool. So I'm guessing that heroes have lost their faith in their way and will get it back by the end of the movie. It's a bit of a shame because the actual um, poster uh, at the start look, looks quite stylish and you know, you've got the one of them that looks a bit like they're trying to make him look like Kurt Russell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then you actually watch the trailer and realise, oh, they well, the, spent, the, the they trailer... spent all the money on the poster, didn't they? Because the, the, the costumes and, and the special effects... Well, the costumes have always been what they are. That's I what know, they, that's what they love. I know. I know. Change it a bit. Well, they were more piratey. Well, no, they weren't. They were. They, they were I saw an eye patch, and they could, did not notice the sort of it was more of a scabbard than a. Yeah. And one of them. And they have. Yeah. They had like buccaneer yeah. boots and yeah. stuff like that. But there was more. So they gone full pirate. The um. Yeah, the the actual trailer without some of the imagery sounded quite menacing and moved with some of the music and that, but then you just had them like, ha, 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 and smiling <laughs> and stuff. It's just, but, it's just in my head, I, I think you know, they could do something really good if they made it dark. But that's I, not what the audience wants. No, I wants. know, but that's what I want to watch. I don't want to watch that. That looks like it's for eight-year-olds. I want them to do a dark... But it's not, uh, not Mortal Kombat, <laughs> but you know more along those lines. Why don't they just do that? Um, no, you're right. I'm, I'm surprised they haven't gone for a more adult market on some of these because there must be a thing for it. But then at the same time, as we've said before, this stuff's a license to print money. Well, if it is, why don't they spend some of that money on special effects and costumes? They don't need to. And direction. A lot of the camera work on that looked a bit shoddy. I mean, this, this is a this is a movie of a TV show that was like on ten years ago or something, and that looks like it's been filmed on an iPhone. Yeah, like but that. it's a really it probably movie. has. Yeah, and it, but it's but people will line up to see this and no, buy no, this. It's just just this is one of those things that I can't get my head around. I've got a lot yeah. of respect. Uh, as we oh, all no, know, no, I, I agree with you. Got like, a lot of their TV and film. But no. But people cannot get enough of this, along with the okay. Carmen Rider and the um, Ultraman and all that stuff. Like, it's just always been like a franchise. I mean, this was the 35th Super Sentai team. I know. I know. And we're on, we said the other day, was it the 40th one now we're on or something? I don't know, I wasn't listening. Whatever the new one. Remember, we watched the trailer well, it's, and it's like, 40 or 50. It or something like that. 40 or 50, yeah. You know every year a new one <laughs> it's good for them yeah and we still we still want that challenge that we threw out there please call us contact us whatever what is it that you love about this so much we, yeah. we issued please that challenge please tell me a while the ago. appeal of this nonsense we, we Damien really wants to know why does this you know what is basically the same show just regurgitate with a slightly different spin on it every time no why is it as massive as it is now it's one of the probably longest running franchises outside in the history of, of television but probably outside doctor who because doctor who's yeah that stopped and, and started it. so that doesn't really count no you're right you're right i know i'm right <laughs> but yeah so please let's know contact us cop faction podcast at mail.com or facebook us tweet us whatever if you're into this stuff we need to know why what is it about it that makes you just love it so much cool and uh, so that's that one and i believe we have one more Do item left finally in the drop zone we have the haunting of morris or rather just haunting of morris i added the the yeah in haunting of morris a teenager named morris dies tragically on a train line his friends helpless to save him now adults his former friends find the spirit of Morris seems to be out for revenge. The film is written and directed by Jason Brown and stars Tamara Glynn, Darren Whitfield, Adam Proberts, Natalie Biggs, Kate Richmond Ward, Dan Crow, 
Lisa Poisman, James Barnes, and Dan Randall. Let's see what it's got. Let's have a little sneaky peek. Paul, you're yeah. looking perplexed. I was, I was hoping they would. When I, I didn't know anything about it, started watching. Oh, it's a British, British horror. Morris. Oh, it's going to be a spoof. It's going to be a comedy. It, it's not, is it? That they've just tried to do a serious horror film, um, and I didn't get any of that from that trailer. Maybe the tagline will help. This friendship has reached the end of the line. <laughs> I love that. Absolutely love that. Okay. That, you know, it's probably the best thing about it at the moment. Oh, you're not giving it a chance. I didn't say anything from that trailer that I, I want to give a chance to at the moment. Um, Just because it's not all whistles and bells and Hollywood flashbangs, that's it. You don't want to watch it. If no, they haven't just, spent a couple of hundred million, I've, I've you watched, don't care. I've watched independent films and in the past. It's just... <laughs> No, I'm gonna. I'm, it looks shit, but it also looks shit in a. I'm still gonna watch it because there could be some good bits in it. I'm gonna let you watch it. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, and then you can t tell me. I, I, I mean, we've spoken about this before. If you're doing a trailer, try and put some good bits in it that makes people want to watch it. You know, the whole film might not be great, but try and put a bit of I don't know action, maybe acting. It, it, to be it, fair when it the trailer first started it looked like they were trying to do like a mockumentary in so far as you know they were they had long shots and them sort of talking over and then it switched to actual acting the, the only good so, bit about that trailer is I, I think they actually got an old car and dropped it from a bit of a height as opposed to some of the, the crappy special effects we had yeah. to watch a couple of weeks ago <laughs> um, but no it's a, it, yeah I'll, I'll let you watch that first and then feedback to me I'll do that. Yeah, um, you know, clearly you've got to judge it for what it is. And um, I'll be interested in giving it a watch. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's, it's an intriguing story. And, and the old story from the past, the, the secret that the friends hold comes back to bite many arse years later is always a good trope. You know, it, it's done well for many years. Um, yeah. the, the I know what you did last summer. Even it that was, you know, that was they were they were the kids of the secret, and it came back. You know, it's all it's it's done well in films. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I'm just a little bit worried. It just um might not hold my attention for an hour and a half. Cool. I'll, I'll add that to my list if it's available to watch in the next couple of weeks. I'll um, add it to my list because I've got a long list of films that look a bit like that to watch <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. right so that's the end of the drop zone now we turn our attention to our round the table discussion remember it's episode 30 it's our happy horror hijinks and we are going to be discussing our favourite comedy horrors so we're not going for the the gruesome psychological terrors we're not going for found footage scary heads messed up movies we're going for those comedy horrors the ones that still might be scary still might be a bit messed up but i've got a but you can have a good old bloody laugh while you're watching them <laughs> aha right um damien what would you like to bring to the table what if, what's one of your favourite comedy horrors? Well, I, I just don't think you can talk about horror comedies without American Werewolf in London. Did I say that all right? Was there? No, I, I just didn't know where you when, when you were going to drop it. Whether it was going to be your first film or whether it was. Well, like, we're not doing. We all this know is it no, was coming. There's no. Yeah, you know, know. it's just a round. There's, there's, there's no there. fight in here. It's just. Yeah, well, it's a it's a great film made made better by uh, Brian Glover which you can check out in our podcast special <laughs> from a few months back on the uh, cultfaction.com website where we discuss his career. But yeah, amazing film. It pretty much, I think it t ticks every horror genre box, really. It is a comedy. There are some pretty well, frightening Well, you say that, bits. so I think um, John Landis would say it's not a horror comedy. I was reluctant to, even though it's the first thing I've brought up and we all kind of think of it as a comedy, but he says it's just a funny horror film as opposed to a yeah, he's yeah. Not, comedy yeah. horror he's not and, and if you think about to, it yeah, you, no, get when, that, you, yeah. when you look at comedy horrors the first thing that pops into my head is Leslie Nielsen uh, 
well, I think of what's dead of dead and loving, loving it. it isn't yeah, it? Dracula, dead Dracula, and dead and loving it. it. That that's all yeah. you know. Carry on screaming that we heard at the very top of the 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 show. But I guess for the purposes of our conversation, let's call it a horror comedy. Seeing as I was the one who brought it up, and now I'm arguing against <laughs> it. Oh, shut up! I don't know where I'm going. But but I th- I think yeah, when we're setting the scene for this, I haven't gone for slapstick horror films it's potentially horror films with funny bits in you know that they haven't gone all out you know scary scary horror films it's you know uh, as i mentioned those funny horror films yeah it was some minor maybe a bit messed up but i'd still call them horrors we can argue that later but um yeah but now american world for london it's almost ironic horror isn't it it's almost that kind of you know, like my my one of my favourite parts is the the cinema scene where, uh, David. Who is it really? <laughs> where David's in there, not that bit. Oh, okay. not, not the <laughs> see you next Wednesday bit. Which um, there is an article about see you next Wednesday on cultfaction.com and the whole meaning through John Lance's career. But um, yeah, no, the where you got um, David's in there with, with uh, Griffin Dunn, who got yeah. mauled as well, who's slowly decomposing more, and all the victims of the people he's killed. And they're not happy at David. And they're not impressed at all, including, are they? Including the guy that went on to play Bib Fortuna in uh, Return of the Jedi. He was the guy that got killed in the London Underground. Underground, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, um, you know, it's just, you know, you don't get things like that. In I don't know if you have since, really, that much. You know, sort of, the you know, nice sort of, sort of bitchy conversation, really, of, like, <laughs> kind of, of, in the afterlife. You know, it's almost... I mean, maybe Beetlejuice when they're in the waiting room. Maybe I'm trying to think of other things like that. But it was, yeah, it, it, there's some nice little moments that kind of, and I think that's what sets it apart. You've got that kind of almost ironic humour of like, well, what would happen? You know, it's that sort of, and that, that's the sort of stuff I yeah, liked about it. And it's also the um, the two friends and their relationship as well. You know, yes, it's a, it's a film about werewolves, but it's just a nice that they include the banter yeah uh, as well yeah they remain friends. friends even though he's like you know you need to kill yourself you know he's telling him he's helping him try yeah. to end the curse of the, the wolf or whatever and it was cool as well because i remember watching it when i was god knows very young seven or something like that <laughs> yeah around my grand granddad's house on vhs obviously um and yeah it was scary but you could still watch it not like the evil dead when i was a kid where i I snuck down and poked my head around the corner and had nightmares for about four years. That was the yeah. bit where the, the motorbike dudes come through the window. That was the bit that messed me up as a child. The motorbike werewolves. The Nazi, Nazi zombie type yeah. things, whatever they are. That was the bit. You've got the nice family, it's all looking great, and then that happened. And even now I feel uneasy. Yeah. So I was going to say, as this has just popped into my head as we've been talking. Is there actually a place for horror comedy anymore Ooh. because i would say yes but most people and this is gonna make know, why sound you arrogant because it just popped into my head and that's how my mind it's, it's works so what well. would lead you to believe that there's because not? so i when you you started when you so we talked about or well, we mentioned dead and loving it and then you said there's that you you've gone more for the horrors that have got comedy for in most them. of them but yeah but they're, they're the ones that you that spring to mind yeah are the, are the, so does for, has, yeah for, my for, thoughts for, pros, uh, no no four words for you go on my film sean of the dead that's a horror comedy it's not a horror it's not a horror horror with funny bits in it isn't it a they, rom-coms what was that a rom-com zombie but they deliberately went out to make a comedy film just so okay. happen to have zombies but then in. so that's but that is there's a lot of tribute in that as well yeah to a lot of but it, it's kind of one of those that's so good it transcends the cliche of horror comedy if that makes sense but again i'm what was kind of supports what i was going to say my, my hypothesis is that um i think <laughs> it's suddenly most, got very highbrow uh, that would always help it. uh one of my one of my major hypotheses on this is is that um hypothesis. Hypothesis. whatever but um don't let that, him lose his train of thought is that, you know, <laughs> i was trying 
Tombstone. No, <laughs> it's, no, no. it's that um, most horror comedies the average person doesn't realise they're a horror comedy. Most people watched Shaun of the Dead and thought it was like really funny and liked it, but probably didn't get half of what was in that film. You know, like, because it's so... And the, and the biggest example of that to me, which I still think is probably the greatest horror comedy, is Scream. But no one got that that was a... Con they then had to go and make Scary Movie to water it down even further yeah. because people didn't get the the irony and the fact that scream was a comedy same as um wes craven's new nightmare which is where i think he got the idea for scream from when he yep. did the freddy comedy you know that was it was scary but it was a comedy it was like a, ironic um maybe it's a bit um uh meta or whatever you want to call it you know like it was mm. kind of breaking the fourth wall and all that sort of stuff and scream done that but most people don't get it's or the average person doesn't get it, it was a comedy you know scream was a horror film but everything in it was the way it was filmed the camera angles the settings the the how the murders happened you know they were you know it was a piss i mean west craven is the janitor of the school wearing the freddy krueger jumper <laughs> yeah, yeah. and people still didn't get it, it was like there was a tongue-in-cheekness to it henry winkler as a headmaster is a bit weird you know but, it, but isn't that the difference because as you said scream was and that's the oh, same horror I think. with funny bits in where i would say scary movie wasn't actually a horror actually, yeah i mean I, scary I, movie i, was I just... also wouldn't even say it was a comedy but, but that's a different, different the first yeah. one wasn't too bad then it just went and even you know went further and further and further and further downhill yeah. but um but yeah but that's the i think most people when they're watching the horror may, maybe Mate, did horror did comedy horror get too clever maybe that's the no i think it has to be uh, yeah because that's that's kind of goes back that kind of brings me around to my point is that the what we what the three of us at least would probably class as funny comedy horror films are actually closer to horror films that have funny elements in yeah, yeah. than it is carry on screaming which is you know literally a parody of all the Hammersmith Hammersmith <laughs> House of Horror oh Jesus Hammer House Hammer of Horror House of Horror um, films of the 50s and 60s yeah so I don't know where I'm going with this just thought it was an interesting no, thing no, to it's, raise it's, it's, it's no, a good debate I mean, to, it, to it, make it's, it's like the, the carry-ons I don't even class them as a horror film and never would Leslie Nielsen because uh, in my head, head a horror film is it, a horror film it's a horror got, film yeah um as opposed to oh, it's just a comedy yeah. because you know the clever things about them is they they have that perfect balance of yeah there's some frighty uh or frightening bits in there even Shaun of the dead there's some jump out of your seat moments uh, and all that kind of good stuff but the, so which is not easy to do but then they tackle on the other bit as well which is making a comedy which again is one of the hardest things to do um, and so, so yeah, it's put them both together, um, and that, and that, that that's what I've gone for. I, I, it, it, none of my list has what um, I, I guess that America would say is is a horror comedy, i.e., um, whatever a scary movie or whatever, because I, I don't judge them as horror films in any way, shape, or form, or co or comedies. So, how would you look at the? As we the, the later Kruger films, because you know, especially got... the last one, the the new yeah. the new Nightmare one, which is I think to me, if you watch that, it's got scream all over it because there's yeah uh, basically I think he made that people didn't understand that, and then he made scream, and then I think people got it. I think that I think new Nightmare is when you go back and watch it now, even again the camera angles, the music, the settings, you know, I think it was almost too highbrow for the average because they just want freddy killing people and dropping one-liners and he doesn't do that on purpose he goes more hardcore and changes the glove a bit. yeah but so and i then... think after three they became more slapsticky yeah, and... yeah. oh yeah totally so does I... that then cross over from being a horror that's got elements of comedy in or does it is it is it now totally become a horror comedy? Well, no, i think you end up you just become they develop the hero so much it becomes more of an anti-hero than a boogeyman same as chucky 
Chucky and Charles play, which the, with the new series coming out, I mean, he's still the evil, you know, murdering bloke who practiced voodoo, who then put his body in a doll. It's just that, you know, as it went on, he he, he says yeah. some cool shit, and we like how he kills people. And but, it's, but as you said, the become em- a cult. emphasis changes. It's not the subtle comedy that that's thrown into it. It's oh, we're going to try and just make this a funny film because, as you say, yeah, yeah it becomes one liners. It's, it's, it's more about catchphrases and... the character has turned into yeah. more of an icon. Um, but uh, and you know, Freddy Three, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Three, probably my favourite. Yeah, definitely yeah. mine. It's, it's and, the and best right, one. It, it was it was the the pinnacle because before then, even with the first one, that was pretty much a full on horror film. There were there were there, there, there were touches of like. A scene here or there three was uh, a good mix of two never happened then three happened. <laughs> yeah and then it was but then then yeah I, well i don't really want to talk about the rest to, to be honest because because uh, uh, in my head it ended at three <laughs> well again that's why i always like new nightmare because they, they brought it back and made it a bit more meta and uh, the whole ending where she's reading hansel and gretel to her son or what's well, supposed to be her son and um you know because they, they've just burned freddie alive and you know that whole thing of like you know you're moaning about these films being violent or whatever these are the stories you read to your kids yeah you know that's the whole kind of bit he's getting at and it's just really clever but i think again most of it just went over people's heads because you know well freddie didn't really say anything funny it's like the whole film's funny <laughs> if you watch it you know it's like kind of I think even Johnny Depp does a cameo at one point on either on the telly or says something. You know, he's yeah, in it. Yeah, I've got a recollection of that. And it's just sort of, you know, that was. But then he got it more full on, spot on with Scream, and even the sec, even the other, even the sequels, because really, then they had the whole, you know, the rules of the sequel and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And it was, it was sort of very matter all the way through. But again, for us, we like that. Does Joe Public get that all the time, or do they just want to go in and go, "Oh, look how he chopped her head off"? Mm. You know, and and I think that's why the like the first couple of scary movies made big bucks, and I think that was the sort of dare I say it, I, I sound like a right snob, but like you know, that's what the average punter wants. And I remember watching it and finding it quite funny, and then it just, but it's that yeah. Whole I mean, thing. my take away it, from the original scary movie is just there's lots of their equivalent of ghost face getting knocked about yeah because people found that funny in the freddy films and they obviously found it funny in the in the original screen but there's like two or three of those bits in the screen yeah yeah, you know, yeah. He's, when he's fighting in the garage and just, you know, <clears throat> opens the fridge door on him and stuff like that but you know that's then milked to death in scary, scary movie. movies and i don't that's think a- i even bothered with the second one yeah i mean it was it was what it was and then it became and then because i think it was the wines brothers to start with and then it went over to um the airplane naked gun guys and then it just i think we ended up on about five or six scary movies by then and national was, lampoons got involved and, that yeah, was and all that yeah you know, <laughs> so, i mean it just all went but again it was the parody of the parody of the parody and it just you know it's like when you photocopy something you know each version is like more faded the original and that that's what we got you know we had the perfect one in scream and then maybe not so much in that one people didn't get it all the humor because they weren't media students and <laughs> or, or watched enough horror and then they did scary movie to kind of help with that and then there's probably other ones now because then we ended up with like superhero movie didn't we and dracula dead and loving it and all that sort of stuff that was all sort of yeah and we ended up in a bad place for some there, of it. there was about five years of crap a genuine comedy horror crap and you're right they all came out about the same time because they were caught on to the fact that actually there's load there's a big market in america for this shit yeah but i, I, I almost stopped myself around them but i couldn't couldn't manage to do it <laughs> yeah and a, lot of, from a lot of them made money as well that was what that was what it was annoying about it and we even got a few i can't think of any off the top of my head now but there's even a few shows then like that sort of crappy horror-y kind of ha ha horror you know that, that wasn't ha ha horror but sabrina teenage witch i was joking that was a, that was a joke <laughs> no but it probably no that was even before that yeah, but that was way before sure, but yeah. you're right there was 
I can't um, remember them now. Not either, many but... of them lasted long, and that's why we don't remember them. But you know, but that was that sort of thing, and I think that's where that's where horror. You know, Scream gave horror its voice back. It made it cool again, and it it gave it some different kind of thing. And it was it was funny. It was, and, and also it was a slasher film. Yeah, that was done differently, and everyone got sick of. Well, I mean, it was very stylish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that's what I mean. When and it became those it, films it, it, had become a dearth of yeah, just some bloke with a knife but, but yeah. and from, it added from, the who done it element as well didn't but, it? on the offset you think oh okay so it's a guy wearing a mask that goes around killing people it's like oh okay well they failed so much with the likes of um friday the 13th you know every time they would go and say that and they managed to do something fresh with a fresh spin on it that was you know weird. and obviously the the genius of it of drew barrymore being killed Absolutely. in the first five minutes which has been done by everyone now even yeah. Yeah. um as much as I liked it, Fear, but Fear Street did it on purpose, though. That was their whole... <laughs> they yeah. were doing it to homage that. So, again, yeah. you know, it's it's still there. It's still a benchmark. It'd be interesting to see what we make of the, the new one that's coming out next yeah. year. Well, I didn't... So I remember got... watching the first one of the TV series and never going back. No, I, know, I, and I don't know if that's even going to be part of the canon of... What, it's number five, isn't it? They're not calling it five. They're just calling it Scream, bizarrely. Yeah, if you put a five on, people might not go and see it. <clears throat> yeah, because they, they could have done like five, others. cream, but you know, stylized the five to make it. Is it an S? Is it a five? That would have been cool. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's like the same. That sounds like the triple X. Same as <laughs> the Same as the madness. As I was saying, I think it's not going to sound right. But, you know, it's the only way. It's the same as the old <laughs> madness of King George. Though, <laughs> What's in his hand when he's stabbing people? The madness of King George had to take the King George the fifth off because they were worried that people wouldn't go and see it if they thought yeah, it was a sequel. Yeah. I don't know if that's in, true or not. No, apparently, it was or in, in North America anyway. <clears throat> yeah, but um, but yeah, so we've got that, and but some of the others on my list um probably go against everything i just said and um <laughs> but they're on there for a reason i mean one of my personal favorites is what i would consider a comedy horror others may not and it is it is a um a bit of a multi-genre cross-genre whatever you want to call it a mashup, as the kids say these days and uh, the 1988 classic uh, directed by Stephen Chiodo, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. What's that you ask? You've not seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> it stands uh, Grant Kramer, Susan Snyder, John Ann Nelson, John Vernon, and a bunch of other people you recognise. But basically, some some teenagers are out having fun in the woods one night, and like a spaceship lands, and they go and investigate, and it looks like a circus tent. And it turns out the aliens are actually these clown dudes and uh, killer clowns in fact and what they do is they kept capture the people kill them put them in candy floss cocoons and then suck out all their blood with uh, big straws and what's the only way you can kill a killer clown from outer space custard pie no i've seen it so i don't want to you have to shoot its red nose no, of course so you know but again you've got your identifiable monster or villain there's a particular way you know the silver bullet the cross the stake or whatever else there's always a way to kill someone so is there a it's got all the a tropes. remastered version of that um they've, re they they've remastered one? it for blu-ray but they've never been well that's uh, good enough because I, I i remember when i watched it it would have likely been on vhs and could barely make out anything of what was going on and that's probably why it doesn't stick in my memory that well. See, I deliberately didn't watch it at the time because I just don't like clowns. <laughs> no, seriously, I, 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 I've never liked them. Um, well, that's your other thing as well, I guess. If you're if you're a clownophobic or whatever the proper word is, um, yeah, that's going to freak you out even more. Yeah. But yeah. it, but it's done in such a way as they just look like the sort of thing you'd see at a theme park, you know, big sort of clown suits. Because it's not. Yeah, like, they're not particularly scary clowns. They're like they're, they're, it's sort of like a banana splits type clown. Yeah, yeah. They're big clown suits. <clears throat> I just can't watch. And I mean, even Pennywise, yeah, you know, I, I I watched it because it was it. And they, and they do all but, the clown yeah, tropes I, as a. No, right, I just wouldn't go near it. I won't, I, I won't watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I go. just don't like Sam it. Paul pictures of clowns. <laughs> His Twitter is. No, um, yeah. So basically, 
you know, you've got the and you get ear clown tropes where right? you get the bit where they all get out the car and there's loads of them. Yeah, you that get a fucks bit, me off. You get a bit Sorry. with the uh, finger, pu uh, the shadow puppets. There's different clown magic tricks and that. There's a bit where one's driving a car, but he's only got a steering wheel. But there's no other car around him, but he's driving and all the ridiculous kind of thing. And it's just, it's probably the the biggest tongue in cheek kind of horror film or sci-fi horror film however you want to do it because i mean it would be a horror apart from the fact that the the clown tent is a spaceship that's about the only thing that makes it sci-fi really it's just these clowns that are going around that's their reason they've come from out of space you know like what motivates these clowns how did they get their powers i know they're from space yes yeah, so this to me falls in the category of comedy yeah set in horror rather yeah, than there are some there are some gruesome death like bits and horror stuff yeah that's got funny elements cool. in i think I've, i do have the blu-ray so i'll see if i can find i'm sure i've got it on blu-ray i'm sure i think i've seen it um it's on amazon or netflix i'm sure it is we'll probably shudder to be fair so that that was but what's always put me off re-watching it is like i say i couldn't make out after what was going on and i've wondered if it's that was part of the thing they were going for no, it has a read because they were there was going to be a sequel, but it um it never it got cancelled. But they're still to this day they're still so low. They've got all the different designs on t-shirts and merch and stuff like that, and it's still that it's never gone away. They, 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 they've dined out on that film for a yeah. long time, basically. That that those the, the people behind it. So I'm surprised they haven't done another one. But then you know they don't want to ruin it. I suppose you don't want to. It's the golden egg, isn't it? You know, if you're making all these other films, why go back and, you know, you don't want to kill the golden calf or whatever by making a sequel. Or... You've mixed, you've mixed a oh, couple no, of. I totally uh... have loads of golden stuff. <laughs> it's, a, it's the it's the goose that lays the golden, the golden egg, egg and, and the golden, golden calf, calf, whatever is, it is. Whatever no, it is. all of them. Basically, <laughs> don't shit on your own doorstep. They've got it. It's good. Don't ruin it. Right. Speaking of spoofs and parodies, though, I want to just take us back in time a little minute to 1984. Do you remember 1984? Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen. Um, Bob Geldof was just about to uh, watch the news and get really upset. There was a lot going on back then. And um, one film that came out, and it's kind of, I think it's been forgotten about quite a lot, was Bloodbath at the House of Death, which was a Kenny Everett vehicle directed by Ray Cameron. It also starred Pamela Stevens, Vincent Price, and Gareth Hunt, amongst others. And um, and that was kind of a, a comedy horror, sort of real over-the-top sort of I guess that was spoof. before he discovered the delights of Nescafe. I think he was still having one in the morning. Though. Oh, right. But, um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's kind of an over-the-top spoof, sort of amateurville horror and it had satanic monks in it and they were at a manor and there was a mad there was a mad doctor lucas mandeville by kenny everett and then there was dr barbara coy who was uh, pamela stevenson and you had vincent price who was like a sinister sort of satanic priest who was hundreds of years old uh don warrington pops up as well cleo rockers obviously pops up because it's kenny everett yeah there's always going to be and, there. um was she yeah, did she play like an elvira kind of no, it's more. It's like it's like they all met in this hospital, and um, and it just went bonk, and basically everyone gets bumped off as it goes along. You know, sort of as as it as it does in those kind of sort of um, hammer horror type things and that. And it's like a house of death, and I uh, it was just really good. And it, it, I don't even know. I'm sure it must be available somewhere. I bet now it's probably on Netflix, and I've just not even realised it's on there. But um. You know that 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 was probably one of the first. I remember having it recorded on videotape from whenever <laughs> it was on telly in about eighty four, eighty five, which would have made me um, eight, seven, eight years old. Which you know, most kids probably weren't recording those types of things, but I, I was, and it answers a lot of questions in my later life, to be honest. But um. Yeah, so that 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 was a, a forgotten uh, parody classic that I think has just kind of disappeared, really. But hopefully, if we can find it, I'll, it probably is on Netflix. So if it is on there, drop us a line, let us know. Because it's I'm more likely to be on Amazon. There's a, there's a I've seen watched a couple of or rather 
tried to watch and given up on a lot of films that are on Amazon that have got the likes of Jasper Carrot in and 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 Hayden Pace popping up in before they were Hayden Pace. Uh, yeah. Oh, Barry Cryer wrote this as well. He's on the right. Yeah. But um, I think the... Barry Cryer wrote the one I'm talking about. Oh, cool. But the one that I remember is that um, there's a couple in the toilet, and um, it's just something like, oh, he's got a mole. Or you've got a mole and he's got a mole in his arm and he goes yes I have and then like a mole comes out of it and gets it and it's like oh because he's a mole but Such it's a mole comedy gold yeah you know but it, but it was quite gross and how it did it you know like it was quite disturbing and, uh, and there was like like axes and skulls and blood and satanic monks running around and that but yeah worth a watch though I uh, do try and track that down but that again at 84 though that was just before I think that was even before or I saw it before Elm Street and all that stuff so that was the beginning of the 80s was was the 80s the, the, the real birth of horror some would say the 70s with Halloween but would we not say 80s took it to the took it to the mainstream cinema I think they're different types of films the, yeah. the, the birth of horror in the 80s would have been your slasher type murder stuff i can't think of the right word for it because even saying sasha doesn't work because you've just mentioned halloween which was pre-80s but the the whole well, popular video nasty slasher, hysteria yeah. of the 80s well, the early is 80s, born out of that but the kind early of 80s as stuff. well they just got ridiculous with special effects uh, and it, it, i remember at the time everything you know, lost the plot and was more about gore than it was horror yeah uh, and, and, and yeah whereas the 70s was more supernatural horror than it was yeah a lot more satanical sort of yeah. stuff wasn't there? Yeah, you from, go, from obviously memory, you've anyway. got all, and you can go even further back and you've got the old MGM stuff which again is, is more supernatural than it is horror in that yeah. sense of the word with the exception of your likes of Psycho which is you could argue the original slasher you then move on to th like the, the oh, I why I keep wanting to say Hammersmith I've got no idea <laughs> the Hammer Horror House House of Hammer Horror Horror Hammer Hammer, hammer stuff <laughs> the Hammer House of Horror that's the one some sort of breakdown stop Hammer Club rate and listen <laughs> <laughs> sorry carry on but yeah so in the 70s you had more supernatural you know vampire yeah mummies that kind of stuff the 80s became more slasher and and just you know you, you could then go down the, the likes of cannibal holocaust and or Holo all of that sort of stuff brain dead wasn't that 80s brain dead was 80s yeah but that's that's later 80s and yeah. it's, it's, that's more i would say that's more sophisticated but, than... but yeah but even in like with all that like we just saying like paul said at the same time we've got blood bounce at the house of death we've also got ghostbusters yeah so there's you know which again... but to me that that's a that's that's not a horror comedy that's just a comedy that oh, happens yeah, to yeah. be yeah. about ghosts yeah. it's not it's, it's not really a, there's not a huge amount of horror elements in that film at all I would argue that you've got possession you've got there's a lot of ghosts especially I mean it it dwindles down it kind of I would say it bookends it more than anything you get the horror at the start that sort of sets the tone See, I, with the I, library I don't think it is horror it, no I, I would it's never it's a ghost story or yeah ghost but no, that's what I'm saying but like the bit at the beginning with the, the, <clears> the in the library and that that's quite then in the middle you kind of get the characters and the you do get some ghosty bits, but no one too much. Then at the end, you get the big set piece again. Yeah, but you can't. You know, it's an action. It's, it, it's an action it's comedy. More action more than, at the end, actually. Yeah, yeah you miss Stay Puft. Clearly not. I don't a know what horror I, character. I, I think it's, in, well, you, it's you an guys, incredible film. You guys know I love it as well as you do. Um, you know, but it, 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 but it, it, it's certainly not horror. It, it's got dark moments in it. It's also deep. It's got the the stuff from the Bible. You know, it's it's, it's clever as well with with with. with, with when they're talking about the plans of the building you know th th these are from the minds of, of great writers but I, I wouldn't class it in any way shape or form as a horror 
except from when I was a kid that there was a, um, a scene at probably on morning TV, Saturday morning TV, of Slimer just going towards the camera. And I must admit, I did have a nightmare for a while. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was only seven. That's fair enough. I think they use that a lot of the adverts from memory. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Okay then, so we've, yes, we've got all that going on. We have got, okay, things like Ghostbusters at least making, if not a horror film, making the supernatural more accessible. Well, yeah, I mean... Because I mean, it was a, it was a kind of a kid's film as well, wasn't it? Even though when you watch it back, you but, know, but when you think it gets a blowjob from a ghost. <laughs> they still managed to put that into a kid's film. But The, the only thing slightly different is, is like kind of talking about horror or comedy horror or, or funny mm -hmm. horror but because you know that's that's the difference so if we're talking about comedy horror I, I think a lot of the films that we have mentioned aren't aren't comedy horrors at all but, but it, was, it was possibly what what you know spurned on some of the, the, the comedy horror as well what was going on with the rest of horror so when you see the likes of poltergeist come out mm -hmm. is that a comedy horror no in no way shape no. but what did that then bring out so it was more of that supernatural yeah element to it at that time that was really big you know seances and all that kind of ouija board yeah, and the space. exorcist and all well, that sort of thing really, like, yeah. really big no no you're right so it's bringing all those out so so where does that lead us then so we, we've got these two things that you know because you know the supernatural thing is, is is becoming mainstream then we've got our comedy horrors going on we've got horror and those elements popping up in in other mediums as well like you say you've got <laughs> i didn't even intend that but um <laughs> you know so what else then because so, i mean so then later on i'm just just following on so we end up with another one on my list i'm not just doing this to negotiate through sounds the list, like it but um that would involve planning. In 1987, we get the Monster Squad, which brings back all the universal horror characters. You know, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, although I think they called him something different than that because, you know. Copyright. Copyright, even that was universal. And you get the, the kids teaming up to get him. And then you know, obviously, uh, you know, they defeat the Wolfman by kicking him in the balls. Wolfman's yeah. got knives. Uh, <laughs> and, and that had a similar vibe to Lost Boys, didn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Lo oh, no, that, was, that was your Lost scary. Boys. That was your Lost Boys Goonies yeah, kind of. Because again, it was that. That was so big for for a couple of years in the eighties, or a few years in the eighties, mid eighties, or whatever it was, where it was all that kind of you know kids taking on the world, or or you know the the, the teen taken on the world um and, and fighting um the, the the forces of evil um and again that was big and mainstream as well and went over to horror you know so when we spoke about goonies big budget big box office success tied into the horror kind of genre as well um then i think you're right you, there, there's a from, from what i think anyway i think there's a bit of a shift uh, around the period of, of screen and then you get a lot of horrors which are almost pastiches um and we've talked about it the day so from from the mid to late 90s onwards um it is we spoke about cabin in the woods it was that kind of a, a comedy a uh, horror with touches of comedy again, that, that sort of meta thing in it yeah. as well yeah um, and also you know even at the time um american psycho you know did this this takes slasher to 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 a completely different level yeah you know, or, or... i was so excited when that film came out because it was actually i'd read the book like <laughs> even before i knew it was going to be a film but, but, and it was like wow uh, i've read something i'm so intelligent this could uh, be a film and again it, it takes it away from you know it almost puts horror you know it's same with scream it takes it from from being seen as because well, there was a period where it was that oh, was a low so it's a horror film you know not much thought goes into that because mm. but they were saturating the market but then it, yeah, they, came, it they became again. like drive through movies didn't they? you know yeah. that sort of like they were just churning but, them out but it became straight to video and... in an intelligent film again american psycho is brilliant you know there's so many clever bits in it and uh, so many clever monologues as, as well and it's also really really brutal in some of the stuff he does uh, you know i mean uh, i remember when i started work and uh, you know people were picking out business cards 
I didn't want any of the, the, the normal stationery I wanted. <laughs> yeah, but, but little things like that resonate through the, 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 the film timelines. Um, so American Psycho was, was again, I think, a, um, a, a great film. Um, pr probably um, often forgotten about, I, I think. Because it, it didn't really have a place. Because a lot of people thought, well, is it horror? Is it a, a weird... I think it's too clever. Yeah. That's its problem. Yeah. As in, that's why it's largely forgotten about so I, I probably not it isn't largely forgotten about but i think it yeah it's what we were saying about scream earlier on i think most people it kind of went over that it was just this guy who was a mad businessman killing people they didn't even get the fact yeah that you know there's the a point where he's it. talking about huey lewis's album yeah. and he's and also did any of it even happen or is it just part of his psycho mind where he's just rabbiting on and dreaming this is what yeah. he wants to do to people or did he did he do it did he not do it because there are bits in there where he goes back and the house the flat's clean and he's like what happened there and yeah. it's like did he do it or not you know there's a whole like his whole psychosis so it is a no you're right yeah there's a lot so, there so by that rationale then you we're, what we're kind of saying really is that horror comedy or comedy horrors however you want to put it has got more sophisticated over the last or oh, not over so since it's since let's say, say it's since its inception ignore carry on screaming that's just <laughs> a, but uh, we're, we're almost kind of along the lines of at least to our knowledge horror comedy kind of started in the late 70s but predominantly became a thing in the 80s but since then from the likes of American Wealth in London which is a horror that's got comedy in it it's evolved through to be more sophisticated hitting the hitting probably its peak with the likes of american psycho so so i i, I kind of think so so and these aren't my words but but, but there's certain times in civilization where people are desperate for horror films and, and they just spike you know um and then obviously they get saturated so that goes completely different uh, so we said so we said it here. so early 80s you know we had the big slashes then it kind of diluted and saturated the market then it was kind of poltergeist and ghost they had their moment to shine um and that you know and that filtered over into the comedy uh, or the horror comedies yeah, that we're like, it's 1993 and we're watching the leprechaun <laughs> yeah but but again then so then you had the likes of scream and then you know there was a number of similar type things even like um i know what you did last summer and yeah. Or, yeah and then there was a spoof version for a few years and people got sick of that they didn't want comedies that were trying to be a uh, takeoff of a, a horror they, they wanted the the horrors again uh, and that's what i mean I, I think they have come back and they are trying to fulfill their first need of being a horror film but with also those clever touches of bringing comedy into it um so so i think they have it sounds like wankery right but they kind of transcended from being you know full-out comedy horrors because no one really wants to see them long term at the moment or we're going through that period but it seems to have progressed because as i said you know it started off in the 90s with scream went away with scary movies late 90s early 2000s but in the time you know throughout those you've had the clever ones the cabin in the woods you know, we talked about several times really clever um so it's a even recently what was it um uh, the one where he goes to the parents he's the the, the black guy that goes and says get out oh the get out yeah really clever yeah. um what would say horror film but really funny bits in it as well so 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 I, again it, yeah yeah a lot of tongue and cheek irony and sort of yeah. almost racism and all that and so you know but but like the other way around like almost mocking the racism of it because yeah. even the bit like and I only got this, I was watching something the other day and I, I totally missed it. But like when he's tied up in the chair and he's escaping, they've tied him up with cotton. So to escape, he's picking the cotton, which yeah. was what the slaves did in the film. And like and they used to call him like stags and he kills him with the stag head and all that. And it's just all those little bits that I missed. Well, I, I understand it, but I missed it originally, but obviously I'm more audience aware of that would have picked up on that straight away like i was saying with the scream stuff people didn't get all of it and i was the same yeah. with that and then later on i appreciate it even more when i realized all the little 
bits that I didn't understand before because you know uh, and that was a really clever thing about it picking I? up what's popular well, pop is probably the absolutely wrong word but what's going on in the world and at that time similar to, to, to today the whole race thing was a big big item and they threw it completely on its head uh, and made you know mm. the, these um, bigoted <laughs> individuals um, the, 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 the real evil people that get their comeuppance run yeah. rabbit run <laughs> rabbit run 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 and all that yeah definitely I mean then then okay so we've got all those then to me that leads into as well are we classing um for lack of a better term the the head f films like the sort of the films that mess your head up because something like you know the greasy strangler could be a horror film has everyone seen the greasy Strangler? yeah you know because you know he's going around killing people there's a lot of weird stuff in it as well but is that is that a comedy horror because there's a lot of surreal weirdness in it as well as like a, a kind of serial killer guy going around so does something like that become is that a comedy horror is it is it funny oh it's hilarious yeah oh is it, it's probably not my kind of it, it's like how some people love the mighty boosh i just don't find yeah, that I, mean, I, I, well, would, I would say that it's like that, that sort of film i think it's a love it or hate it film yeah, but, but that's what i mean it's, yeah, it's just not, disco on cutie. My, not my personal comedy way <laughs> yeah I, I just don't get them but i think it's yeah but the, the good show is just when i like the first time i watched it i was like this is either genius or this is just cobbled together crap mm. but the more i watch it the more i'm like no they knew and it you know but does that make it a comedy horror or is it just surreal is it a surreal horror you know have we have we got those elements because then also you've got stuff like um, well i think it sets its tone in the first i don't know 25 30 yeah. minutes of of it's it's a comedy horror it's it's a kind of throwback to the 80s to the no it's, i wouldn't it's not really it's <laughs> no, not throw, really. yeah it's not throwing back to trauma but it's there's a kind of there's a feel to that film that i can see what you, you mean could, it could have been made in the 80s yeah. obviously with nowhere near as good a budget but not that it's got its best budget anyway but, but you yeah. know what i mean the the the, the visuals in it would have looked a lot worse in the 80s but it, it, to me it's a throwback to those kind of the stuff that was just continuously Street churned out and it's slightly like more it is more more cleverer it's just cleverer than that but it's still a throwback to the 80s which was going to be you know my question i guess is if you look at the 80s you've you i think you said it or you've said it in the, on the recording or um when we took a break like leprechaun and yeah, no, Goonies so like, yeah. and even gremlins are they are they just comedies regardless of the fact that they they've got holler elements holler, holler. yeah but, but most people holler at the back most people wouldn't say gremlins was a comedy because they didn't get the joke i would say you know if you said most people gremlins has got some little things in it and some of it's quite cute and funny but they wouldn't necessarily say gremlins 2 is completely just, different, yeah, different yeah, and that's totally different but the first one together. i don't think like the whole you know like my dad was up the chimney and, you know that's hilarious but most people would see that as like a really sad tale they don't realize that it's almost trying to parody all those sorts of films you know yeah. it's missed on people and again gremlins was a really clever film at the time as well because it you know uh, it was probably around the same time as critters wasn't it now nah, critters was just after funnily enough yeah yeah no but, but that's what i mean <laughs> yeah. but they had gremlins had i some... nearly i nearly put critters down no but it had such a good atmosphere it wasn't a full-out comedy yeah, it's a christmas movie yeah but yeah absolutely. that was a bait yeah but but again it was you know that great melding of of horror at the time it was absolutely you know billed as a horror film it, 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 you know, even when you think about the post well on amazon prime now gremlins is a 15 and critters is a pg yeah i think and i'm sure i always remember gremlins being a 15 it was yeah, way yeah, before no, was, 12 was, came yeah, into effect so the other year at school when they wanted to watch one for christmas i'd build up gremlins and we couldn't watch it couldn't watch 15, it. so we had to watch critters yeah but they like that See, in my mind, I don't even think of Gremlins as being a horror film. I, I did 
earlier on and then I grew up and it it absolutely is more of a comedy well no I wouldn't even class it necessarily as a comedy it, it's I just think it's a very black comedy yeah, yeah. You, 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 in a way you know what I mean it's like it's very dark it's, it's a comedy creature feature yeah but, but I know what you mean though because it's but, 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 so, yeah, the only reason I say it is because it's it's got the, the almost that Danny Elfman <laughs> No, but, but the soundtrack yeah, yeah. No, you're right. as well, which, which, which no, is, really, it then. Do, 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 do. is really clever as well, but it's very dark. Um, it's also got the poignant bits. It, 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 it's, yeah, it's, 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 Gremlins is a really, really weird film to put into to, to one or even two categories. It's, it's genius in its way because they managed to do a horror film that was funny appealed to a mass audience had some gruesome deaths in it and yet had a marketable toy for children and <laughs> and a couple of cool songs because you had the mogwai whistle <laughs> and the da, 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 and it is a christmas da, 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 and it's christmas yeah <laughs> so, just, they just know. can't do that nowadays <laughs> yeah and, and they, liquid, they liquidized them. they put them in the microwave didn't they yeah the microwave well, they, they yeah both liquidized, liquidized and microwave. microwave and then the old lady on the chair that was my favorite bit mrs deets and they've also got the bank bit in, which is very much sort of Mary Poppinsy, you know, because he works yeah, in the and bank. The, I mean, the soundtrack sort of where Mrs. Deeps is walking towards the the the, uh, the bank. That's a very much like a homage to Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. The the soundtrack to and the Wicked Witch and of the Phoebe Cates, Dorothy. Yeah. Oh, I love. Phoebe it's just Cates. an all-round great film, which has kind of taken us away from the point. But my <laughs> point was. Yeah. You know, because you had a you had a dearth of of, of video nasties in the eighties, yeah. which are they horror comedies or are they just video nasties? Do are we are we are we say are we putting them in the same category? No, as, well, not, you know, like kind of horror course. Most most of the video sort of nasties stuff. were just genuinely. There, there's money out there there's yeah. so much just being produced to be fair as well though the um was it the littlest whole house in texas it was with dolly Parton and brett reynolds was also listed as a video nasty because <laughs> it had whore in it until they realized who was in it and what it was about what was it all oh, the biggest little whole house biggest little, like, yeah, yeah, that's like that. and um i can't say i've seen it so no it's not one for me but uh, no yes yeah, so there's all this stuff so where does gremlins go then so you've got gremlins these cute little creatures and that and then like um i was gonna say quite recently but just in that 2006 like black sheep the new zealand film where all the sheep start sort of attacking everyone and because that was that was that was a comedy one as well it was a comedy horror and there's some very nice moments in that but where where's where, what's the difference between that and something like gremlins in because we've got creatures they're doing some cool killing stuff to make it a horror I just think I think Gremlins then... is more sophisticated. Yeah. Mm. So maybe it just comes down to to budget direction. No, no, the script style. Yeah, it, it the, is. And then the directly. feel of the film. Then you're watching. Because let's face it. I mean, Critters. Yeah, that came out. You know, just after Gremlins. It was a play on Gremlins. You know, its characters. Well, it, it became the because then you had Ghoulies, didn't you? You had um all the different ones where suddenly there was all the little quick like you had the um puppet master mm. and demonic toys and anything where there were suddenly little gangs of creatures so maybe just comedy uh, sorry horror went that way for a while where it's just horror with funny elements in or you have a really good film whether that's a classic horror film at the time or classic comedy or horror we comedy in it and then you get the rip-offs that delete the mute uh, the market yeah I'm, I'm taking gremlins out of that conversation but it, when you, you you think of true horror from 80s until early 90s it just had to have comedy in it yeah because even like fright night had all the yeah 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 that had like you know the whole um like when the i can't remember the vampire's name now when he comes in he's like whistling strangers in the night and yeah you know little that's it's a very camp yeah. film to be fair fright night this the remake reboot whatever you call it was shockingly bad oh that had um 
David Tennant. Colin Farrell. Colin Farrell, yeah. I was about to say Will Farrell. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been Colin Farrell and Farrell. David Tennant, but you just missed the boat. It just wasn't good. It's all about Peter Vincent. Once you get that and his redemption, that's what it's about. But that was a great film. Again, that was was that a comedy? Yeah, I would say that's I mean, more a comedy you know, than a horror. It just happens to be using horror as the vehicle for the comedy. Well, what about something then, going back, switching it back to a more modern, what about something like Rubber, which was the the tyre that had telekinetic powers? So, you know, like, and it would like roll along and then like do that sort of squiddy thing and like someone's head would explode. So that, that like. is, that's, to me, it's falls strictly into comedy horror. It's, it's, it's exactly that's what. that sounds like that couch thing that you yeah and and about. slacks all of so, that sort yeah. of stuff is it, 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 it has up, to be comedy horror to be, it well, can't be anything well, else rubber has a bit of a twist at the end but yeah but it is set up to be ridiculous enough for, like wolf cop things like that you yeah know, they're set up to be ridiculous enough and do you remember Jack Frost? Not the not the Michael Keaton one. Not the Michael Keaton one. Yeah, the don't get those two. That was a horror. <laughs> yeah, don't let your kid watch the the, the other one. You know, yeah. Like Shannon, one of Shannon Elizabeth's first films, and he um, attacks her in the bath, and he's got her against the wall, and then he puts the carrot back on afterwards. <laughs> and it's just stuff like that. And it was like you know, but again, they it was it was almost yeah. Did it become almost too far then? Like we saying about the knockoffs and that. Did it become what's the most ridiculous concept we can do? Because we had like Charles Lee Rain, the Voodoo Man gets put into a doll and Chucky. We get Henry Pinkerton who gets electrocuted during the thunderstorm and becomes the Shocker. So he's got his look, his gimmick. And then we got the Jack Frost. He gets um. But I then, can't remember why I'm but the, the Chucky's serial, the serial and the Chucker, they are their horror with comedy in. And again, the, but, the, the, the only thing I'd say about the, well, not not um, you know, not, not actually having a go at Chucky, but also what you had from those was screenwriters that were just trying desperately to do something different as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got I've got a lot of time for for that. Um, I, I don't. I don't really care about a, a, a tire that's going off killing people or cats that's going off because it just doesn't doesn't do anything for me um, so, so, that, so was it like right now we need to think of this next ridic ridiculous concept and that's going to be our next you know so is it almost did the did the comedy concept then drive the horror or did yeah, the horror yeah. drive the comedy I think concept? so and that's what we, we had that for yeah. a very long time from like I had a film in my head and now I can't think of what it was called I don't think I even wrote it down I yeah but I, I, I can absolutely see why people do it because we're the same oh not another bloody vampire film mm. but um yeah so what so it we've so we've got a concept that drives something we've also got um we were saying like a, maybe a good writing and so what are we deciding then so our criteria then are we saying that it's a horror film that has to have comedic elements in it or are we saying a comedy horror then is a comedy that has horror elements well i don't think you, you, i think yes. for a comedy for a, a for it to work it has to be horror first comedy second cool to be a yeah. what you would call a great horror comedy so you know I've got a list of of, com of ho what I would call horror comedies in, in front of me and not one of those is comedy first horror second otherwise all you're doing is just coming up with a stupid idea yeah. like a sentient tire or it's going to be a complete rip off of a proper horror film yeah like your scary movies yeah. and dead and loving it etc etc mm -hmm. I don't know where we're going with this conversation. No, no, but... just interested. No, so we're, no, but we're actually we're starting to define what we think our oh, our version or what we no, perceive no. a comedy horror as. Then, so we've looked at all these different types that are around. We've gone through the different themes through the years and stuff, and we've kind of decided from looking at all these. Then, so it it's a horror first that has comedy elements, not just some hacky knockoff or. Yeah, or someone's spoof, caught in the title and then goes, right, spoof, how can we turn that yeah. into a film? So what about something then, more recent film, which is a bit weird and creepy. Has anyone seen Dave Made a Maze? 
2017 now classic. No. Oh, have a look. It's about this guy that like builds a maze in his front room. Like that and his out. girlfriend called Dave. Anyway, um, and his girlfriend comes home, but like, and he's in the maze, and then they have to go in and get him. But when you go in the maze, it's like massive and all the way. But it's another. It's horror element to it because there's things in the maze and all that. But it is very much another sort of surreal. Not quite as surreal as the Greasy Strangler, but um, you know, like one of those where they've just kind of come out of a weird idea, and it works. You know, it's something different. It's, hard. It's, it's it's definitely worth a watch but um but then you have things like that and then like around the same time as well you've got stuff like the goosebumps movie coming out so again you've got these other elements where the goosebumps you know it i would say it's horror first and then comedy but more aimed at a younger again aimed at a younger audience yes yeah. because you've got all the horror element i mean in, in the goosebumps movie, you've got every horror element because it's all these books coming to life so like you know you've got mummies possessed dolls garden gnomes sasquatches you know so, so to that end and bearing in mind we've been going for quite some time i reckon we j just well we've we've hit our definition then haven't yeah. we? So, so based on that definition horror first, let's just quickly reel second. off what we think are our top couple of horror comedies still not going to detail if you want to go and watch them go and watch them and see if we can at least get one common film out of that that we all agree with. I'll go first, give you time to think. You're going to say American Wealth in London. I'm going to say American Wealth in London. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to say Lost Boys. Then I'm uh -huh. going to say Scream. Then I'm going to say House, which we've not even touched oh, on. Oh, uh, yeah. And Shocker. <sighs> yeah. That would be I my five. What was your take? Say, say it away. again, sorry. It was so man. American Wealth in London. Yeah. Lost Boys. Yeah. Scream. Yeah. House. And I'm Shocker. Yeah. So if you take anything away, if you like my attitude to this podcast, go and watch those five films. You'll love them. Completely forgot. You don't that. have to have a different list. No, I completely forgot. Well, about I would that. rather I, you I did just, have a completely just, different list. Of... Don't try and trump it. Just. Well, I, I would add in Bloodbath at the House of Death from 1984, Kenny Everett, um, just for the, just to, you might not like it as much now, it might not stand up as much now, but it gives you an idea of what people thought was funny and spoofy <laughs> at the time. You know, like you, yeah. you, you've got a benchmark of what was going on at the time. This was in a time when uh, alternative comedy was a new thing and it was coming out and Ken Kenny was one of the again at the forefront of that so it gives you just an idea of what that sort of thing was I would recommend as well Killer Clowns from Outer Space just because of its ridiculousness and the idea of again it's a concept that was the horror that the comedy comes from so I think that that fits our our remit so i have to shove in shawn of the dead as well oh very good because it, yeah every time that's on telly i will just re-watch it and, yeah and, and it's uh, one of those where you 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 flick over it's itv2 yeah, or something yeah, yeah, yeah. oh just watch this bit and you can always spot, oh no now i'm gonna watch this bit and that's it there's always something else to spot as well it's like the simpsons you know like that little other reference or something like, yeah because only recently i realized that uh, he works for foray electronics which is yeah. ken foray the actor yeah, who was in you know, Return of the Dead and lots of other films, and is a very good actor. And um, yeah, so you know, just those little things. And um, I'm sure there are others, but I can't think of anything. Remember, but scream, yeah, scream. Admittedly, I did put you on the spot. But, yeah, you know, scream, scream we're, is we're a benchmark. two and a half hours into recording it. Yeah. <laughs> but scream is a benchmark for me. But I would say, even to see where that comes from, go back to Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which was the one he brought out just before that. The last like original if you want Kruger film yeah Freddy Kruger film and um and you will see what but you know how where screen comes from and that idea of sort of the meta-ness of the horror and the comedy within that anyone else no I'm just disappointed I forgot about house that <laughs> It's one of my favourites. I've just got that thing now. I know I've forgotten one and I can't think what it is. You know, like, I know there's another one. 
Or, or text me tomorrow if it's before I've edited it, and I'll I'll, I'll do an impression of you or something. <laughs> Tombstone. People under the stairs. That was very much like house. That kind of horror as well. Just See that to me I though. That I don't being freaky. Yeah, I don't think that's horror comedy. Though. I don't remember laughing at that. There's, one. There is some funny bits in yeah, it. There definitely what I'm is. It, it, oh, it just reminded you of yeah, house. Yeah, house. Okay. It, that was around the same time. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so that just popped in my okay. head. Okay. Fair use. Okay then. So that brings episode thirty happy horror hijinks to a. Uh, temporary wrap up until we think of other things to add <laughs> to it because you know the genre grows every day and so do we right so <laughs> thank you for listening to episode 30 uh, if you want to keep fresh with all cult faction news and updates and stuff check us out at cultfaction.com if you have got any questions queries arguments or things you just want to moan at us about you can email the podcast at cult faction podcast at mail.com we are also available on twitter facebook tiktok instagram and probably loads of other ones that i've twitch. forgotten about twitch yeah, oh, and twitch now as well stay tuned for your twitches then you see what happens <laughs> and um yeah but basically cultfaction.com will have everything on there and the links to pretty much everything we do in the whole cult faction universe so please do check that out and remember to rate us and review us on all your favorite podcast apps devices and just anything else really stick it on your wall share it do us a favor we'll appreciate it so uh, stick it on your wall people yeah, still on, using on your, myspace on your face yeah you can stick it on your facebook wall all oh, right okay or your Fair twitter piece, yeah. wall yeah yeah, yeah. All it's right, not all you and your myspace wall if, so <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if you're still rocking that yeah. fair play to you tom's Tom, waiting for you yeah. <laughs> Tom never, Tom never went down for six hours <laughs> that we know of. There, there is a Mrs. Tom yeah. though. So <laughs> maybe yeah. he did. Maybe he did. Um, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we're wrapping that up now. It was a bit of comedy for our horror, and um, so uh, join us again next week as we continue our countdown towards Halloween, where we'll have some more horrific hijinks and treats ready for you, and maybe a few tricks. So it's uh, it's a good night from me. Brett Summers. It's a good night for me, Damien Hicks. We're now doing our names and we say goodbye now. <laughs> it's a good night for yeah. me. I will see you soon. Do have nightmares. <laughs> I'm going to pause there because I really do need a piss. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh, what a wonderful world. world. I didn't know <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? Fucking hell. Fuck off. Why didn't you scoot her? That's cheating. How do you do that to look more intelligent during the podcast? What? Oh, fuck Fucking Michael. Give me your headphones. Fuck's sake. Coming in your ears. Fuck it, see fucks. Fuck it, see fucks. It's that fun. Dooby 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 dooby. Dooby 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 dooby. Quack quack. Screw you guys. You wanna, did you want to fucking do this shit? Do you want to do it? Something is not right with number two. Ugh, see a doctor.